Hi beautiful souls, welcome to my channel Elle's Temple. My name is Elle, I'm a goddess guide and intuitive tarot reader. Welcome back to my returning viewers. Welcome if you're new here. I'm so so happy to have you all here. I hope you guys are all doing well wherever you are in the world. So today's reading is a very special reading all about messages from goddess Saraswati on aligning with the essence of who you are. So goddess Saraswati is a very special goddess because she is going to be the third goddess we're going to be working with in my upcoming goddess circle as part of my moon temple membership so for those of you who might be new to my channel in case you're not aware i have a moon temple membership on my website elstemple.com you can just go to elstemple.com and click on moon temple membership i'll leave the link to it below as well and in here i have three different tiers the moon maiden tier which is all self-paced and then i go into detail about all the different yummy rituals and goodies and things that you get as part of that tier. And then we also have the goddess circle tier, which is going to be a live goddess circle call once a month on every new moon, starting with the new moon in Aries and running through to the new moon in Virgo. So it runs for the light half of the wheel of the year. I'm going to be doing a second circle for the dark goddess circle for the uh, dark half of the year. Uh, you don't have to be in the Northern Hemisphere, by the way, to participate in this. If you are feeling that you're in a light goddess aspect of your life right now and you want to birth yourself and actualize your potential those are the themes we're going to be working with in the circle so you know if you're feeling called to it even if you're in a different part of the world that isn't going through the wheel of the year that is the light half of the year right now that is totally fine um, the calls are going to run on a Sunday evening closest to the new moon so in the frequently asked questions section at the bottom of my uh, page for the Moon Temple membership, I go into the exact dates and the time for each of the calls. So we go into here what you get as part of the goddess call. So we're going to be doing a meditation. We're going to be introducing the themes and the goddess for each particular circle. So goddess Saraswati is going to be our goddess for the new moon in Gemini. It's all about creativity and harnessing your creative potential self-mastery and also essentially like committing to going the distance she can really help you with like mastering any kind of skill or talent or creative pursuit if there's any sort of creative project that you've been wanting to get out there then goddess saraswati is the goddess to help you commit to that project and get the work out there so we also will be doing a reading in each circle an attention setting ritual which is really really amplified by the power of doing that as a group and also a very powerful pathworking goddess activation as well with each goddess so there's six different goddesses we'll work with one for each different circle so in the page I go into all the different goddesses and the theme for each particular circle so here we are we've got the uh Gemini new moon goddess Saraswati self mastery and commit to going the distance so check that out if you're interested in that there's also a third tier as well which I'll leave you guys to look at which is all about if you're looking for personalized mentoring where we go through very similar things to what we would do in the circle but it's one-to-one -one and it's really personalized really bespoke to you and exactly what you're wanting to actualize exactly what you're wanting to step into if there's a project you're wanting to initiate a business you're wanting to start whatever it might be uh, we'll work with nurturing that over the six months uh, that you'll work with me so to introduce a little bit more about Goddess Saraswati for today's reading. So as I mentioned, the topic for the reading is all about aligning with the essence of who you are. So we have got Saraswati. I'm going to read the intro actually from the Goddess Spirit Oracle deck. If you want to go into a little bit more detail about this beautiful goddess, then check out my blog post. I'll also leave the link to the Saraswati blog post below. I did the blog post on Wednesday. My, uh, I usually do a post every Wednesday about the goddess of the week. And so also for the, the moment, for the next few weeks, I do the goddess blog post centered around the goddesses for the goddess circle so that you can get a little bit more information about them, find out about their myth, find out about what they can support you with, get some ideas of rituals and just connect them with their energy before the circle if that is something that you're interested in going into a little bit more depth with getting connected with these goddesses and activated with these goddesses 
in the actual circle it just gives you a little bit of an introduction to them in the blog post so it gives you a wee taster so check that blog post out below if you want a little bit more detail but just for today to introduce this reading i'm looking at goddess saraswati in her form here as a goddess of sacred wisdom and goddess of essence. So Saraswati, the goddess of cosmic knowledge, music, art, and nature, encourages you to align with the essence of who you are and follow the creativity of your soul. Explore your intuition and dreams. The answers you are searching for are within, so take time to meditate and listen to your own sacred wisdom. You may appear to be motionless on the outside, but within your inner landscape, you will be developing and attuning yourself to your cosmic world. This is a time for understanding your spiritual self, for trusting and following your intuition and creative inspiration. And her little mantra here is the answers I seek are within me. I trust my intuition. Okay, my love. So to introduce each of the three piles for today, if you are drawn to card number eight, whoops, <laughs> with the veil walker, you will be part number one and the timestamps for your reading will be in the description box below. If you are drawn to card number two with the priestess, you'll be pile number two. You've got card number two and your pile number two. And for pile number three, if you chose card, if you're drawn to card number seven with the stargazer, you'll be pile number three. And I've also got crystals today for you to choose from. So for pile number one, we have the beautiful kunzite crystal here. So if you're drawn to this kunzite point, you'll be pile one. If you are drawn to this blossom, flower blossom agate, you'll be pile number two. And lastly, if you're drawn to the sodalite tower, you will be pile number three. Okay, my love. So pause the video if you need a little bit more time to choose which pile is drawing you in. Of course, with this type of reading, uh, we are all very multifaceted and we all have many sides of us and many interests, particularly for those of us that are creative. So there may well be more than one pile that is drawing you in at this time. So trust your intuition, only ever take what resonates and leave the rest. Okay, my loves, I'll see you in your pile. Hi there, pile number one. If you chose card number eight with the veil walker or the Kunzite crystal, then this will be your reading on messages from goddess saraswati on aligning with the essence of who you are so let's get straight in i'm going to actually start with reading the the message from the guidebook about this card and then we'll get into your other cards and then i've also got tarot for you today for you guys i've picked out the herb crafters tarot so we'll live shuffle and pull some tarot cards as well to get into a little bit of extra guidance. So let's start off with the guidance from the book. So the Veil Walker. So the keywords are crossing, transition, courage, and evolution. Cold grips the earth and the smell of firewood fills the air. The Veil Walker welcomes the first signs of winter. As the mist starts to rise, she sets forth on her journey, knowing it will bring wisdom and insight. The Veil Walker represents the crone in the beginning of her transition. She is unafraid of the darkness of winter and of the quietness it brings because deep in the frosty soil, she feels life flowing in the dormant roots. About the witch, Ulfrun Sigurdstater was a vulva, a Norse seeress. She lived in the 9th century during what is commonly known as the Viking Age. Born in Aarhus, she spent most of her life in the vicinity of Uppsala, one of the main centres of pagan worship in Sweden. I'm sorry if I butchered some of the pronunciation of those, those names or words. Um... Okay, so the Veil Walker, beautiful. Let's get into the other cards. Let me just move Sarah's way over a wee bit so we can fit everything in. Okay, so first up we've got card number nine with Brianwin of the Starla Ostara, A New Beginning. We've got Lavender, Surround Yourself with Love, card number 19. We've got Mind Garden. We've got Space. We've got Salisaben, I think it's pronounced that way, card number 49 with Commune. And finally, we've got When Darkness Surrounds You, Be the Light, You Are the Light, card number 17, which is a lovely inner goddess card by Alana Fairchild, which I'm going to finish with that card, actually. So I'll leave that to one side for now. So let me just move. Hmm, where can we fill these in? Put that down there. Just make sure this is all in shot. Okay, alrighty. So pile number one. 
I feel like the essence of you or the essence of who you are, what's coming through in terms of aligning with the essence of who you are is that you are someone who I'm definitely picking up kind of therapist vibes. So some of you may be a therapist or you may be sort of that person in your friend group or amongst people that you meet who you're just sort of considered the the therapist of the group or the counselor of the group or the one that kind of brings people together or brings people to turn to you for your wisdom, for your counsel, for your guidance, um, particularly if they're going through any kind of transitions because the Val Walker talks in that card we talked a lot about, you know, being able to help, being able to navigate transitions essentially and I feel like you can help people navigate kind of intense transitions in their life you know if they've gone through certain difficulties I feel like as well with mind garden here I'm definitely picking up kind of therapist vibes like someone who can help people with their mind with their mindset with um you know essentially being able to um you know, if they're going through a lot of darkness as well with when darkness around you be the light, I feel like you are the person who can help walk them through. It's like you can be that um, like that guide, that seer, that one that can sort of hold the lantern and walk people through their dark, troubling times. Like if they're suffering from depression, anxiety, things like this or, you know, trauma or difficulties, um, you know, just like I said, navigating transitions or something like that. It's like you can be the light for those people. You can help guide them through. Um, you can help them find that lantern within. And I feel like as well with lavender here and surround yourself with love, I feel like you are someone who it's like you provide a lot of calm and tranquility and comfort to people. So even if you don't do this in a formal sense of like, you know, you might not have a therapist office per se, but it's kind of like that's sort of your space like that's kind of what you do like you can uh provide this beautiful space and we've actually I'm just noticing I'm talking about space and we've actually got the card space here and this card talks about being able to provide a safe space for people being able to hold space for people being able to help people work through their emotions um and all of that I feel like you you are this this like very comforting nurturing presence that can hold a beautiful tranquil calm healing space for people to be able to come and and just talk to you share with you whatever they might be going through and like I said some of you may do this formally like you might be a therapist or a counselor a guide a shamanic healer a spiritual teacher a spiritual counselor um you know I'm also kind of getting as well with the veil walker some of you might be like mediums or you might also do something like in terms of helping people with transitions it could be also something like helping people transition through you know to the afterlife like as in being like a death doula or something along those lines like helping support people you know who are at the end of their life like respite care as well um you know it could be it could be something like that um but I do definitely feel like I'm picking up a strong healing, comforting presence. Um, I feel like you, you definitely, you you definitely help people. What I'm hearing is like kind of help people cross over from from sort of whatever darkness that surrounded them, from whatever dark place they've been in, from you know whatever like you know say they. Um, they've just gone through like transitioning from some like personal personal difficulty like from their kind of personal winter because this was this card was also a lot to do with like you know um not fearing the winter it's almost like I'm kind of getting Persephone vibes from this card like you know the queen of the underworld it's kind of like you know she was sort of abducted to go into the underworld but then she became the queen of that space she she gained her sovereignty in that space and she wasn't afraid of that space anymore she she you know uh, she yeah she was the so she was the sovereign she was the she was the queen she was the guide she was the one who could help people um you know understand that space and and the necessity sometimes of going through that darkness and of going needing to sometimes go through an underworld experience um in order to um then be able to like galvanize all the wisdom and everything from going through that difficulty um, and then sort of transition out the other side. It's also actually kind of Hecate vibes as well, because Hecate was is the is the like the the you know the helps guide 
the souls down into the underworld and then Persephone is kind of the one in the underworld that kind of receives them so I'm kind of getting both of those goddesses they could be um they could be relevant for you but yeah also with Hecate as well she's she's uh like the the guide to the you know the at, the guide who stands at the crossroads kind of thing which is sort of like the imagery of this card like kind of standing in the middle of the woods and it's kind of like you know the goddess of the night and the goddess of you know the being being the veil walker being able to kind of see between worlds being able to receive messages as well we've got a raven here so some of you may, may be able to like connect with the other side as well like with the veil walker the veil may be very thin for you so you may be able to like connect with uh you know messages from you know pass on loved ones for people as well so you might be a medium or something like that be able to provide mediumship as part of what you do um but I definitely feel like you, you provide this beautiful space. I feel like you also um, help people uh, who have difficulties with uh, like connecting emotionally with others, um, who may have difficulties like nurturing relationships and things like that as things like that as well. Um, with the Kunzite crystal, that can really help with that. So I feel like that's something that you kind of do is like help provide a sort of safe space, a safe haven for people to, you know, emotionally heal, to like work through difficulties, to, you know, help soothe them from any emotional pain that they've had, help them understand their needs and their emotions, help them work through darkness so that they can kind of have a new beginning, which we've got here with the brown one of the style of a star and a new beginning. It's like you you help them have this new beginning and help them like be able to like rejoin the community or like re reform relationships, reform healthy relationships. I'm kind of also getting as well, maybe some of you with the when darkness surrounds you and this this mind garden as well that, that could be speaking of not just um, mental difficulties and things, things like depression, but also addiction as well um it could be someone you know you could be the, that some of you um you may have gone through that yourself and come out the other side and now you work with people or you just that is something you feel really called cool to supporting people with or you find that that's something that in your client practice maybe you get a lot of people who have very like addictive dark thoughts a lot they're very or they're very addicted to certain patterns of behavior or it could be addictions to substances or something like that as well um, and I feel like you, when they only have a lot of darkness around them, maybe particularly for people who, you know, they've only grown up with groups of people who, um, you know, that's all they've known in their lives. Like their family was like that or their friends are all like that kind of thing. But you provide this like safe haven. I'm kind of getting like a safe house, a safe haven, like um, you provide this space for people to come and be able to heal from that. And I feel like that's because you've done a lot of your own work yourself. I feel like if you're not quite a lot old, if you're not older or more mature, um, I feel like you're a very old soul or you have a lot of maturity and spiritual wisdom and um, you have a very mature take on life. Maybe because you had to grow up really fast. Maybe you went through something really difficult when you were young um, and you had to like heal and, and um, maybe you had other people who helped provide that safe space for you. Uh, they held space for you, you were able to kind of go through all that and find a new beginning away from, you know, whatever your difficulties were, what, if it was an addiction or just a, a traumatic past or something. But now you're in a position to be able to help like others with that. It's like you are a shining light. I feel like with this mind garden card as well, this talks about like, um, you know, helping to grow like plant seeds of good thoughts and help them to grow. So I kind of and like making sure that you're constantly weeding any like negative and self-destructive thoughts so you know that could also be like a coach of some sort or like just someone who works with people to help them with their limiting beliefs or something like that with their self-esteem so that could be another another sort of expression of that essence as well is like helping people with them their mindset helping people with their um like yeah with their thought patterns to you know sort of create like lighter thought patterns like get rid of you know weed out the dark you know the dark patterns the dark like limiting beliefs toxic thoughts you know things that are sort of you know um like kind of like yeah crowding their garden kind of thing and just creating like a lot of 
like sort of darkness in their life like with his skull here it's kind of like um symbolic of death but I feel like this is also saying you know we've got this sort of figure arising out of the skull so I feel like with that and the new beginning with a star it's kind of like again you help people rebirth from like a death type situation it could be also helping people with like ego death as well um or something along those lines like <clears throat> with spiritual awakening you could see this as a kind of spiritual awakening card as well um helping people go through an ego death or a transition from like the death of um you know like it could be you know if you help counsel people through uh you know if they've had a death in the family or something like that you help them to like re-blossom after like the death of a close loved one um or I feel like it's kind of more to do with like an inner death though and more symbolic maybe than literal again maybe some of you maybe there's a few of you who do do something like a death doula so you actually help people with like navigating through the process of like uh you know going into the afterlife kind of thing or you know with it like sort of in a spiritual way like guiding their soul but for most of you I feel like it's symbolic um it's helping it's sort of like yeah the the death and rebirth again I'm picking up Persephone kind of vibes like you know because she comes back to earth in spring as her maiden form again which is like we've got this sort of spring energy up here and then we've got this sort of crone death winter energy down here which is like she's both she's both the queen of the underworld um and also the the spring maiden and we've got Astara with the spring here as well with um goddess Brown, one of the starlet Astara uh so I, I feel like yeah there's something around sort of like both yourself and your own life and then what you do for others is like helping helping to yeah sort of transition or navigate through from from this like winter of their lives like a winter phase in their lives which is very like sort of I guess like depression things like that but it could be it could be sort of you know psychologically like a general depression or it could be you know specific depression because of you know a transition they're going through because they've been made redundant because of you know um like they're going through a spiritual awakening because you know it could be a sort of situational depression um because of a breakup you know whatever it might be and again like for some of you this is something you do formally you might do this as your job um I just saw 15 15 on the time and then it could be a significant angel number when I said that but um it could be something you do as your job but it could be it could be something that you just do like naturally like this is just your essence this is who you are this is something you just do for people like people just find themselves drawn to you for this type of thing you're sort of like the the guide that sort of calls you know like your soul call that goes out and then like all these all these like people come running to you like you've got this safe house this safe space this safe haven this beautiful it's like you're this lavender energy this very soothing healing calming energy particularly for people who have maybe like cptsd PTSD, things like that, people who suffer from panic attacks or like, um, yeah, mental turmoil is what I'm getting. Like you definitely help them feel soothed, calmer. And again, that's something that I think I mentioned before, Kunzite can help with that. It helps with panic, like calming panic attacks. Um, it can help, yeah, really like resolve and heal and move on from negative emotions. So I feel like that's, you're like kind of Kunzite embodied, <laughs> essentially part number one, like you, you just naturally emanate that like beautiful sort of clear supportive healing energy um it's really lovely energy it's very like kind of cooling and calming yet warm at the same time it's really interesting like tuning like as I'm connecting with you as I do this reading as I'm channeling your energy or tuning into your energy it's like it's really amazing it's quite unique I'm, I don't think I've picked up on this in previous readings so this is kind of interesting um, but yeah, I'm also getting as well with the psilocybin, we've got the kind of mushrooms here, we've got this little cauldron and we've got the, um, you know, with like lavender and then this, all these plants here as well. Um, I'm getting as well that maybe for some of you, you're quite interested in like alternative forms of healing. So plant medicine, um, like shamanic type healing, shamanic medicines, um, like plant ceremonies, medicinal mushrooms, like psilocybin is a medicinal mushroom um and like yeah sort of holistic remedies things like homeopathy things like um yeah sort of herbalism 
um naturopathy that type of thing like you like kind of using holistic remedies often involving maybe plants of some sort um, or maybe you make your own medicines or you're just learning about this or you're really interested in this um it may that may not be for all of you that it might just kind of depend on the type of therapy but um i feel like that's something that you're very natural naturally drawn towards or naturally have an affinity with you sort of understand it on a very energetic level it's like you understand plants on a very energetic level and that's something that you could potentially support people with is not just kind of like talk cell therapy or counseling but also go deeper and helping them um like energetically recalibrate their their whole mind body spirit system through like plant healing or through sort of deeper energetic healing um yeah I'm, and I'm, I'm definitely picking up like someone doing um like I'm kind of getting with the veil walker you know the shamanic kind of doing like shamanic journeys like you know beyond the veil um like maybe you 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 help people do like go on a shamanic journey um where they can then receive like their own you know they can connect in with their guides and receive like medicinal wisdom you know and you kind of hold space for that again like you support that you facilitate them to be able to do that or to like you know in in for them to kind of like journey and get the healing within the session themselves um could be something like that or maybe you do retreats as well i'm kind of seeing with this like commune it looks like a little like nature retreat out in the woods and you you're just kind of like calling um whoops i just realized sorry there's nudity on this card youtube youtube policy is not mine i just cover up with the crystal of modesty um, <laughs> um yeah so there there might be like for some of you it might be like creating little retreats or little um I don't know why I'm saying little <laughs> it doesn't have to be little but creating retreats just because it, it looks it's a little hot with like little people but like um you might you might be creating retreats or um like a, a haven a center um like an addiction center it could be for those of you that work with people with addictions or a center for you know it could be like some kind of spiritual healing or like say if you do you are something like a homeopath or a herbal healer herbalist or something you're creating like a you know a, a space a safe space because yeah we've got this like there's a lot about space there's like a living room space and there's the word space which this card is all to do with holding space and then we've got commune so it's like something about kind of like having space holding space creating a space maybe I feel like many of you just kind of do that th like through yourself, like through, it doesn't even have to be that you have a specific space on the external because I feel like you just embody this. It's kind of like more about you as it, as your, you know, we're talking about essence here. This is your essence that you just do this and you could take you out of this physical space. You do this in and you would still do it amazingly and it would give people the same result even if they were sitting in a car park is what I'm hearing that's really random um but you know it could be that like maybe some of you work with um young adults as well um like particularly like if it's an addiction like helping get young adults out of addictive environments or something like that um or even like toxic relationships or um you know abusive families or something you know it could be something I'm kind of I just picked up on a vibe of someone kind of like being a support for like young people of some sort I think that's kind of also coming through a little bit here with the like the little people that are here so it could be yeah like working with people who who are younger than you or you know at school or something like that or at, at college or something um but I, I get a really like even though you're kind of this crone and you're mature I, I get this really young cool vibe from you from you for some of you so it's like yeah you might work with young people or you just have a certain relaxed comforting presence that like draws kind of all people of all walks of life to you and they feel really comfortable in your presence it's very nurturing kind of cancer energy but with like a little bit of Scorpio so some of you might be a water sign um just very good at like navigating rela navigating I was going to say emotions there but relationships came out so like possibly both so for some of you it could be like yeah you're just you're kind of you know even like within your family you're that cool aunt right that like your nieces or nephews come to you and like you give them the the good advice about relationships or something you know 
Um, it doesn't have to be that you do this, like to, to align with your soul essence, you know, doesn't necessarily mean you quit your day job or, you know, you do this as, as a formal career path. It may well be. And for some of you, it may be something that you grow and evolve into more and more as, as life goes on. But it may be that you do other career paths, like in the earliest part of your, in the earlier part of your life or something, or certainly with these types of, um, with these types of sort of archetypes, I guess, often in order to become such a good guide and counselor and support system for others, it's usually that you've gone through some dark stuff, you know, to be, to be the light for others who are surrounded by darkness is usually because you've gone through some life experiences yourself, or if not, you've just, I guess, maybe incarnated into a family where you've been a good support system for other people in your family. Like I'm thinking of like, say someone who maybe you had a sibling who had a lot of like mental health or like dark, you know, maybe depression or bipolar or something along those lines or addiction um, or a parent, you know, so you could have come, you you could be from a sort of codependent. Um, and by codependent, I mean, in the traditional sense of like the, the person who an addict depends on, um, not codependent in terms of how it's often used, which is in relationships to mean like anxious style of attachment. Um, though it could be, it could be that you support people with that as well, or if you're if you're someone who supports people with relationship issues, it could be that you help with that something like that too, um, which is to be honest like a type of a, t- a type of addiction in in and of itself really. Um, so yeah, but I definitely I definitely get whichever specific like aspect of what you help people with. It's it's generally just this energy of like you are the light for for people who are going through darkness and maybe for some of you you're going through this darkness still and you're kind of someone who you're in the process of of seeing you know maybe you you're going through the therapeutic process right now you're going through this like personal winter yourself this like you know on this journey to like embrace your your sort of crone energy your like persephone in the underworld energy you're transitioning through that like okay, like, yeah, I realize something is wrong. I need to kind of work with someone. I need to get the support I need. Um, I need someone to hold space for me to process all this stuff. And you're like in the process of that and you're working through that and that's amazing. And you're kind of learning to like um, grow this healthier, more constructive mind garden that allows you to actually like blossom and grow into, you know, your best self. Um rather than something that's like kind of all weeds that's just toxic and noxious and like you know um depletes the soil and kind of kills off all life force kind of thing um so it could be that some of you are going through some of that right now but I kind of get the vibe that most of you that's in the past and you you've moved on from that and you're either just you're kind of embodying this essence or stepping into embodying this essence more and more and helping other people to get there to have their you know transition from their winter to their spring and you know have their new beginning in life or you're 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 formally doing this you're on your path you're literally living your purpose and you're embracing this 100 percent. and yeah I feel like they keep guiding me to this card I feel like I should read from the guidebook about this so Upright, this card means communing with the sacred, connecting to otherworldly energy, remote viewing, regeneration through union, coming together with a tribe, finding cosmic family. Yeah, so some of you might be in the position now of like creating, holding that space for a group of people, like finding your tribe. Like, you know, it could be through, you know, you're starting to put your work out there in some way, or you're doing retreats or like creating a center or a space, or you're just, you know, advertising your work through social media or something. And people are being attracted to, you know, your, your words of comfort and, you know, um, your ability to help guide people through darkness, you know, something that's starting to like, as you express yourself more and more, you're attracting your tribe. So for some of you, it could be related to that, but yeah, Definitely with like connecting to otherworldly energy, I kind of picked up with that Val Walker, like some of you can um, 
connect over to the other side like you can see between the veil and like get messages you know we've got like i mentioned we've got the raven which is symbolic of messages message like being a messenger for uh you know the other side to bring messages so maybe that's something that's like awakening in more and more of you like when you provide the support it's like you're able to connect in with that person's like spirit team their higher self their ancestors you know or whatever it might be to like bring messages through for them in some way so yeah very beautiful energy so reverse means disconnection lack in community fear of merging with others lack of interest in connection soul loss and pain from the past yeah definitely feel like pain from the past is something that you've had to work through and something that you help other people work through or perhaps will help other people work through as you mer as you align with your soul essence more and the astrological ruler is we've got the sun and pluto here as well which oh my gosh pluto who is hades who and i spoke about persephone and yeah that's exactly that like pluto god of the underworld and persephone goddess or queen of the underworld so yeah definitely that energy of like helping people transition through their underworld phase which is definitely part of the heroine's journey um so yeah that's that's amazing i love that so let's see do i need to read all this bit it's quite a lot about the actual plant um it's just talking about like the sacred vision inducing mushrooms, the psilocybin, um, were and are revered by indigenous peoples as a gateway to the realm of the gods and a way to receive deep spiritual insight and, and inspiration. Uh, so yeah, again, maybe like shamanically, some of you do something like that, or you, you work with indigenous plant practices or something like that. And as part of your practice or as part of the healing that you offer, um, so yeah, Maria Sabina, a renowned Mazatec curandera, held all night mushroom veladas ceremonies while in a deep trance state to commune with God and heal the sick. She called the mushrooms Nino Santos or holy children. When she was seven years old, she discovered the magical effects of the mushrooms. She ate them and found herself in a realm with lots of children who talked to her and played with her. Oh yeah, I did kind of pick up these little like children. So yeah, maybe some of you work with children. Uh, Maria would hear a beautiful supernatural voice that would direct her healing, explain the nature of life, and teach her the language she spoke during the Villadas. She called herself the interpreter, the one who reads the sacred spirit language and transcribes, transcribes it for others. Yeah, so some of you could be like, um, yeah, you, you, you're the sort of seer, you know, you connect with the other side. You could do something like this. You could do like tarot, you could do that through tarot or through um, some form of like, it's not so much divination like in terms of predicting the future it's kind of more like getting spiritual guidance for people to help them through the darkness but you could do it through some doing something like this so some of you may be tarot readers um or you just you're a you you're a channel you know you're a seer you can connect in and just receive that information and channel it for others receive that spirit language and transcribe it i guess yeah which is being a channel so modern day research shows that psilocybin produces substantial improvements in anxiety and depression symptoms. That's so interesting because I picked up on that with Mind Garden. So yeah, some of you could be like finding ways, finding like herbal or plant medicinal ways, plant medicinal ways, plant medicine ways to help like heal people with, you know, uh, mental health symptoms or like depression symptoms, something like that. So yeah increasing a sense of well-being and overall quality of life yeah which is kind of what i get with this like lavender soothing calming healing energy surrounding yourself with love like helping people to yeah improve their quality of life improve their mind improve their mindset shift into a more self-constructive form of life be able to form connections with others all of that kind of thing you're an amazing power one can i just say oh my gosh like please comment below if you are part one i would love to hear from you you could just put an emoji and put part one but i bow down like what you guys are doing is so so necessary and i hope you know that and just you being alive on earth right now is so important with like everything we have going on and you know it just yeah i'm i'm impressed and wow <laughs> is all i want to say so guidance the guidance for this card is los ninos santos have come to tell you that you have arrived to your place of power they are beacons of light on earth and offer psychic healing on a collective level. Los Ninos Santos are asking you to tune in and commune with the ancestors and powers that be to further develop your power. Psilocybin floods our body with light codes, loosening the knots we've volunteered to protect through the journey of life. Don't resist the profound teachings. Relax into the higher mind as you commune with its loving awareness. As you find home within commune with others, 
as you find home within oh as you find home within commune with others and experiences that support you connect to nature and the extensive community of energies that are lovingly there awaiting your conscious arrival commune with the spirits and channel the wisdom provided with sure-footed spontaneity yeah channel the wisdom that is what you do you channel wisdom that's that's you in a nutshell <laughs> file number one i feel like I feel like I can pretty much leave your reading here, but I did promise I would do some tarot, so I'm going to. And uh, we'll also finish up with the guidance from the You Are the Light card as well by Lana Fairchild. I love her cards. They're just so potent. And it has a little healing ritual at the end as well, so stick around for that. So I've pre-shuffled the day, so let's just get straight in. If you're enjoying the reading, can I humbly ask that you like the video and comment below even if you just put an emoji and consider subscribing if you're not already part of my channel it helps my channel grow so so much you have no idea and I so appreciate each and every one of you who's been doing that it really supports me so so much I really appreciate you okay so part number one what does part number one need to know about aligning with their soul essence Ooh, okay Yes, queen, four of fire, four of wands, which is like, yeah, this home energy, right? Like anchoring something in, you know, um, creating a sort of warm, like cozy environment and kind of getting like strong Hestia vibes as well. Hestia is also one of the goddesses we're working with on the upcoming goddess circle. She is the goddess for the new moon in Virgo. Um, it's all about like um, tending to the hearth fire, which I feel like you can do in spades pile number one like you embody that energy of being the like sort of hearth priestess type thing or like being like the 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 one who tends to the like hearth in the home or creates that like warm supportive nurturing healing environment for others you know so again i'm kind of seeing pictured in this this card we've got a lot of like plant medicine kind of being created here so um, some of you may be in the process of doing that or you may be taking some or interested in taking some for your own healing journey um, or you prepare your own tinctures or like herbal remedies, herbal, te herbal teas, things like that. Um, I'm also seeing with the red thread as well. I feel like this is very destined, like the, the red thread is is you know the red thread of fate so it's like you're very fated or this is very destined for you to create this foundation you know four of wands are about foundation setting setting a firm foundation creating a firm foundation so i feel like for many of you even though i kind of said like you you don't necessarily need this on the on the external because you you just embody this energy within anyway but i feel like you'll get to a certain point in your life and maybe some of you are at that point now or you're you've been going through this process of like or this is what you're being called to do to really align with your essence is like create a firm foundation create this sort of like haven or this like physical space um this hearth space where people can kind of come to see you for whatever it is that you do being a counselor being a therapist being a plant medicine healer being you know like being a homeopath, whatever it is, um, being a spiritual counselor, it's like you're you're creating a this little, you know, it could be I'm kind of almost seeing this as like a little garden garden shed, and then you're converting your garden shed into like your office or something, and it's like this really beautiful warming space. Or maybe some of you are doing this from home, you know, with the fire there. It kind of seems like you know the the hearth space. You're you're working from home. You're able to create this foundation in your home. Um, so something along those lines. What else does Paul want you to do? Woo. Ah, yes, awakening. Okay. I feel like, I mean, awakening is an interesting one. We've got more lavender here and Tulsi as well. Um, I feel like awakening is an interesting one because it's kind of like we can go on many. It's not a one-time thing unless you're like, and then you're like Eckhart Tolle who just like woke up like overnight. But like that never happens. <laughs> Like for most of us, like raise your hand, how many awakenings have you gone through? Like it is cyclical and it is like, there's like as many springs and winters as you have in your life can be as many awakenings that you go through. You can have different facets of spiritual awakening. You can have a sort of more general spiritual awakening. Then you can have like a feminine spiritual awakening. You can have like an underworld spiritual awakening. I feel like awakening is sort of an endless process, really. It's not like, it's not a destination it's a process and I feel like you're kind of you're you're 
already on that journey. I don't feel like this is something you have to go and do or like go and achieve or like you haven't done your awakening yet. Because I feel like most of the people in this pile are like, you're you're there, like you already are awake, you know, to a, to, to a certain extent. But um, perhaps what is what is next is like being able to create this foundation so that you can help other people away. Because I did speak about... I can't remember which card it was. The Mind Garden card, I think, at the beginning um, about, like, death of the ego. And that is the awakening process, is, like, going through the ego death, which is also the Persephone process, which is also, like, the Inanna process, right? Goddess Inanna, the descent to the underworld. She strips off all the attachments, you know, all her identity attachments, all her queenly garments and jewelry and everything that that identify her as a certain way in the outside world. Um and create this sort of mask or this identity. And she stri has to strip all of those off to go and meet her dark sister, a rescue girl in the underworld. And there she is just, she is human. She's not a nun of the queen. She's just human. And she has to meet all her, like in these like three or four days or whatever it is she spends in the underworld, she has to meet like every shadow aspect of herself kind of thing and, and reconcile with it. And it's only through doing that that she can become whole, you know, and I feel like that's the process you have been on or are in the middle of or somewhere in the process of. Uh, and you are in the process of stepping into creating a foundation where you can help others go through that as well. You can help others. You, you create and hold that safe space for others to do the descent into the underworld, strip off all those identities, strip off the like the toxic mind patterns, the, the, like the games our minds play on us, the destructive mind patterns, the addictions, all of that. You help people let go of all of that, all the emotional, um, baggage, negativity, the conditioning, you help people let go of all of that and like walk between those worlds of being in the, like the real world, like on the earth, like having to be productive and do all of that kind of stuff. And like, you know, transition to this kind of underworld version of themselves where they can meet their shadow self the part of themselves that they've repressed and pushed into the shadow heal it through whatever means you do that like it could be through plant medicine through shamanic healing whatever it is and then kind of be able to come back up and like rejoin the world commune with people like create healthy connections you know have a constructive life I feel like you're like this with this little light. It's like you're this little guiding light for people. Like it says, you're the light. Be the light when darkness surrounds you. Be the light when darkness surrounds others. You are that light for people. So if you are in the middle of this right now, I feel like, especially if you, you're going through an intense time of it, it's because you're going to guide people through that journey themselves. You know, at the beginning we spoke about with the Val Walker, it is a journey, you know, so... um I'm just kind of picking up strong Hecate vibes again, like calling on Hecate as you go through that because she is like the the guide. She is the one who holds the holds the lamp, um, who can like guide you through that process so that you don't feel like you're in case you feel lost or like it's really fully dark. It's like she can help you like connect with that sense of light. So I'm hearing one more. Let's get one more for pile one. This is pile one. Woo! Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness, this is why I love doing this live because you see the synchronicities coming out and it's just really fun. So, and you're like, what? How can the death card be fun? But it's necessary. It's necessary. Death and rebirth. You know, we've got the butterflies here and we also had with, we've got a double, double skulls and double butterflies with the butterfly hair on the new beginning. So, you know, it's death and rebirth energy. It's Pluto energy. Where did we have Pluto? It was here. Pluto energy, death and rebirth. Whoops. Cover up the boobies. Um, so before YouTube tells me off. So <laughs> as if that's like the thing that we should be worrying about in the world right now. Oh my gosh, there's like a fairy with no, anyway, I'm not gonna talk about that right now. <laughs> that's another whole rant. Um so yeah, we've got the skulls, we've got the butterflies, symbolic of transformation and rebirth. You know, the butterfly goes through from its chrysalis, sorry, from its caterpillar stage into the chrysalis. You provide that chrysalis for people, part number one, I feel like. You are that, like, comforting, soothing, safe space that they can be in the chrysalis with you, that you can hold space for them to be in the chrysalis as they, like, 
fall apart and unpack and un unrelease and and die die to themselves it's that thing from um oh gosh what is that series i'm gonna forget the names i'm so bad with names of things <sighs> It's a New Zealand series by Jane Campion, Top of the Lake. And there's a scene where, um, who, oh my gosh, looks, the lady, the lady played by Holly Hunt, who's this like seer woman in that series. You should watch the series, by the way, it's really, really good. Um, she looks exactly, she looks exactly like this. And she is like this like enigmatic seer. And she is like, she kind of, kind of, Loki leads these these women who are going through transitions and really difficult things um and they've been through trauma and whatever and it's like in the out in the outback in New Zealand it's like in in the like nature and there's a scene when um can't remember the name of the actress Emily no Elizabeth Moss Elizabeth Moss yeah I think it's Elizabeth Moss when Elizabeth Moss goes to see her and she's like going through a whole personal crisis and stuff and Holly Hunt's character says to her like you need to die you need to die to yourself die let go just die to yourself today or something like that it's said much more eloquently than, than that but you get the idea and I think that like that's kind of what you do like you just help like you you are that that seer that Holly Hunt character that like holds space for people to come and they can just like because they feel safe in your presence they can like release their old self. They can die to their old way of being. Oh, I'm getting chills. I'm getting massive chills. My gosh, you guys are so powerful. Wow. If you don't know this pal one, I hope you know this. I really hope you know this. But like, if you don't, like you are so powerful. Like Pluto energy is power. Like some of you, yeah, I definitely picked up like sort of Cancer, Scorpio energy. So with death as well, that's that's linked to Scorpio. So some of you may be, cancer or scorpio north node or rising or possibly sun or moon but yeah either way you probably have pluto or scorpio strong in your chart somewhere um i wonder if i'm just thinking if there's like yeah i was just wondering if there was like a life path maybe life path eight actually that's a lot to do with like being really empathic and compassionate for people and helping people with their emotions and all that kind of thing. So it could be, it could be that your life path eight. Um, I'm, I'm also seeing as well, one thing I forgot to talk about was like, that they're reminding me about is, uh, we've got like 19 and do we have a number, another, well, 19, 20, and 13, so yeah, and 17. So some of you might be, um, like, working with people around those ages, or that could have been a certain transitional time for you, like a very potent time for you where you went through a sort of a death and rebirth process. But, yeah, I, I feel like there's, there's this strong Pluto-Scorpionic energy with you where you help support people, I mean, again, it could be, it could be death door. It could, this could be, you help support people through the death process. Um, but I feel like for, that will be for some of you, but for most of you, this is symbolic. It's helping support people through awakening, through dying to their old way of being, dying to a, a you know, conditioned self or, or the self that is like self-destructive or an addict or whatever it might be, or has a certain like ego identity that's kind of trying to protect it, but is actually like, you know, sort of, what's the word, like, why can't I think of words? It's like, it's like blocking off the vitality, blocking off the, the garden to be able to blossom. And you, you help come, you help come in and help them weed out the weeds through like your med, your particular brand of medicine, whatever that is, you help them weed out the weeds, you help them identify their emotions, heal their emotions, identify their needs, be able to process all of that, process in the their little like in the little chrysalis. And then they can like be reborn as this like as these beautiful as a beautiful butterfly. So let's finish up with the you are the light guidance. Card number 17. But wow you guys are powerful. Please comment below and tell me what you're doing. I would love to hear from you guys. So 
you are going through a spiritual initiation. This is happening because you are ready for it, even if it doesn't always feel that way. Yeah, initiation, awakening, same kind of thing, but yeah. Um, the way to pass this test is to rely on the light within you. Don't let fear, don't let fear or doubt make you distrust the plan. Sorry, don't let fear or doubt make you distrust the path ahead. Don't give in to despair or believe that things will not work out. You are learning to trust that the universe knows what it is doing. There are great and beautiful things meant for you. And no matter what appears to be right now, they will come to you in the perfect way and at the perfect time. Keep your faith in the light. All will be well. I feel like for some of you, you, you if you are going through a period of darkness, that guidance, may be, that guidance may be for you. But for most of you, that guidance is like, that's what you do for other people. Like you help them to rely on the light within. You help sort of be that like light for others. You help them to see that there are, you know, it's kind of like helping people through depression and things like help them see that there are great and beautiful things that are meant for them, no matter how dark it is at the moment. Um, so yeah, spiritual guidance. Light is powerful. Some people don't understand this. The fear in their hearts makes them cynical. That fear stops them from seeing what is true. In the absence of truth, they hold on to their judgments instead. They scoff at what they don't understand. Be careful of allowing such people to influence you. It's not wise to take advice from people who are invested in creating pain. You can have compassion for them, but you must not underestimate how their negativity can taint your trust in the universe. When we feel the light within us, when we trust in it, we are able to move beyond the fear and negativity that exists in this world. You have it within you to be that light. The only thing that can trap you is the choice to believe in the negative and give in to fear. That's not you, so don't choose that for yourself. Don't listen to people who would cause you to question the light. The light within you is the real you. Be at peace, beautiful one, for the positive power of the light in you is stronger than any darkness. Oh, that's beautiful. Um, so the sacred ritual is focus gently on a visible source of natural light that could be a candle or a campfire, the moon in the sky or reflecting on the water, the sun shining down from the heavens, or you could even close your eyes as you see, feel, imagine or pretend that there is an eternal light flickering inside of you. Yeah, that's that little, that little light we talked about with the awakening. You have that eternal light within you. Relax as you repeat this soothing and empowering affirmation to yourself, aloud or silently in your mind for as long as feels good for as long as feels good for you. I choose to trust the light. I am safe and held in the light. I am the light. I choose to trust the light. I am safe and held in the light. I am the light. Beautiful. Okay, upon number one, those are all the messages I have for you today. I hope that resonated for you. As I, uh, as I mentioned earlier, if you could take a second to comment me an emoji below or let me know what power resonated or how it resonated, that really helps my channel. Hit the like button if you enjoyed it. It helps Tell the algorithm what content is resonating for you guys. Hit the subscribe button if you're not already part of my community. I'd really love to have you here. Check out my Moon Temple membership in case you feel called to join that or one of my other tiers. Uh, sorry, in case you feel called to join the Goddess Circle or one of my other tiers, the Moon Maiden tier or the uh, Moon Goddess Mentoring tier. So I'll leave the link to that below. Otherwise, all the best with aligning with your essence and I will see you in the next reading. All my love. Hello, part two, if you chose card number two with the priestess or the flower blossom agate crystal tower, this will be your reading all about messages from Goddess Saraswati on aligning with the essence of who you are. Okay, so uh, I'm going to start off actually by reading the message from the guidebook. This is from the Compendium of Witches Oracle. So the priestess, initiation, ascension, mastery and power. She traces a circle on the ground as the flickering light of the fire makes the shadows dance around her. Her will is strong. Her vision is clear. She knows that the spirits of her ancestors guard this place. Sorry, guard this space. Through a rite of passage, a new world is accessed. The priestess masters new skills, consolidates power, and elevates her knowledge. She knows that the betterment of ourselves lies in our actions and in the lessons drawn from our experience. About the witch, Al was a Neolithic priestess who lived in the High Nista Valley during the 4th millennium BCE. She worshipped the Earth Mother, a deity that personifies the forces of nature and both their creative and destructive aspects. Beautiful. Okay, so very powerful energy pile number two. I'm already picking it up. It's, yeah, super powerful. So let's get into, I've pre-pulled your oracle cards. We've also got... I'm going to be using uh, the Our Tarot from the beautiful Our Tarot deck by Sarah Shipman. 
uh, to pull some tarot cards and then uh, we'll finish up with guidance from the Love Your Inner Goddess uh, card as well, which has a little ritual on the end. So it'll be quite an in-depth reading this one. So first up we have card number 17, Rise of the Inner Warrior with Solidarity. Yes, I definitely picked up strong kind of warrior, en warrior energy from you guys. Card number 22, so we've got lots of twos, a card two here and a 22 here. Some of you might be life path 22 as well. Uh, library, take control of your own narrative. Uh, we'll get into that in a little bit more detail in a moment. We've got initiation, whoops, and we've got some cover up. Crystal of modesty, not my idea, you guys, from YouTube policy, unfortunately. We have to cover up nudity. Um, and oh, we've got more nudity here, oh, my goodness more crystals of modesty mitrogenia mitrogenia card number 34 was shape shifting there we go oh, so annoying to have to do this fortunately fortunately over on my patreon i don't have to worry about that <laughs> productivity we've got productivity card and we've got warrior goddess we've got double warrior warrior and warrior goddess so definitely strong warrior energy here let's just move them up so everything can fit in okay was that in the shot yes it is warrior goddess okay actually hold on i'm gonna move sorry you guys i'm gonna move that here and then this one over here to finish with so yes that's better Okay, already I'm finished fiddling. Let's get into it. So pile number two, first up, my gosh, you guys are so, so strong. I feel like you had to be, you've had to be like a fighter in your life. Like you have that warrior energy. You have a sort of fighter energy. Some of you might be Aries, some moon rising. Um, definitely picking up a sort of activism energy, a strong, like kind of almost like Mars energy. Um, so yeah, possibly some of you have had to fight for your rights in some way, like fight oppression, fight just to be heard, fight for like, it could be like a civil right or, um, a human right or something like that. So you may have grown up in a very difficult environment of some sort, or you might still be in a difficult environment. Um, or like even just it could be like fighting to get your needs met right like maybe for some of you um i feel like with library take control of your own narrative with this like fighting energy i'm getting um and possibly life path 22 some of you might have gone through quite a difficult upbringing um possibly not so much from like a like a cultural source of oppression or something but more from like a family dynamic like something like narcissistic abuse is kind of coming through because with library take control of your own narrative i'm kind of picking up like someone being very manipulative and controlling with the like you know the hand they're holding the 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 you know like strings are attached kind of thing like making you move a certain way making you believe certain things about yourself maybe gaslighting you um, all of that. I'm so, so sorry if you've been through that pile. Number two, I do understand what that kind of dynamic is like. I've been through that. Um, or if it wasn't within your uh, family of origin, it might have just been someone other someone else significant in your life or in a relationship. It could have been in a romantic relationship where you, you've you gone through possibly at an early age, maybe at 17. We've got the number 17 or at 22. Those could be significant ages um, when you you might have gone through something where someone took control of your narrative, someone tried to control you, someone tried to tell you how to think about yourself, how to think about the world, how to perceive things in a certain way, something along those lines. Um, so it could have been sort of a more interpersonal oppression, um, you know, where you've had to sort of get your fight to get your own needs met or fight to be heard or fight to like, um, you know, have like to sort of recognize the validity of your perception of the world essentially like recognize the validity of your truth of your like of your narrative of like what you tell yourself about how you experience something because someone else could have come along and been very like no that's not how it happened like really guess it or undermined you undermined how you felt undermined how you experience things in some way so I definitely feel this oh, pile two and my heart goes out to you I, I know 
what this is like. It's very difficult um, to go through any of those kind of dynamics, um, whether it was an interpersonal thing or whether it was like having to fight for like your rights because of some kind of cultural oppression, some kind of gender oppression or discrimination, some kind of racial di discrimination or oppression. Um, just someone, someone somewhere trying to control your narrative for whatever reason is, is I feel like been your experience in some ways in your life. Um, and again, with Life Earth 22, I, I spoke, I think we had a Life Earth 22 in one of my previous readings. Um, so there may be quite a few of you here and could be quite likely there are quite a few of you here. Also Life Path 11 as well, because um, 11 reduces to 2 and we've got 2 with the priestess here. So like both Life Path 11 and Life Path 22, their master numbers in numerology, that in the, those particular Life Paths, they often end up going through like very extreme it's like it's like a extreme path to ascension like a accelerated path to ascension um through having very difficult experiences in childhood and teenage years and things like that very difficult forming experiences that act as a sort of initiation into spirituality because it's kind of like where you don't get any solace or recognition or support of like who you really are it's like it kind of forces your it like it forces your it, it forces this sort of warrior soul to like rise up within you essentially it like galvanizes it sort of initiates you and galvanizes you into like aligning with like your your true soul essence uh in a more accelerated way than perhaps people from other life path numbers. It's not to say that other life path numbers have it easy or they don't go through pain or anything like that. They do certainly as well, but perhaps in a different way. It's very specifically with, with 22 and 11, it's like designed to initiate you on the spiritual journey because both life path 11 and life path 22 are here to like support humanity, here to be guides, here to be spiritual teachers, here to be priestesses, here to... um yeah, like unite humanity, create new earth, you know, all of that kind of thing, like be like spiritual leader, spiritual warrior, um, you know, yeah, just all of that kind of thing, like that you're, you're really here to uh, use your spiritual insight to share knowledge with the goal to serve humanity and make the world better. I made some notes on it when I first pulled your cards and I had a bunch of downloads about it, so I was just reading from those, but there's definitely part of your sort of aligning with your own essence and aligning with like the truth of who you are is like taking back control of your own narrative. And some of you may have already done that. You may have been through a process of doing that. Some of you may be still just starting out on that. Um, and some of you may be even further along where you're helping. Other, you're in the position now of really embodying and embracing this priestess energy, this guide energy where like you know we talked I think it talked about did it talk about something to do with like the tribe I feel like it was it was sort of like stepping into your power yeah her will is strong her vision is clear I thought it talked about tribe maybe not okay I made that up but yeah it's it, I feel like there's this kind of this energy of like you you attracting your tribe because of like energetically what you've been through whatever specific kind of oppression or control that you've been through that you've experienced that that difficulty of that experience has initiated you into them being able to be this like embody this priestess energy this guide energy this ability to like create a better vision of humanity for people um I'm also getting like dragonfly spirit as well is really could be really strong for you and dragonfly energy or dragonfly spirit medicine is is a lot to do with like having gone through like the murkiest circumstances you know if you think of like the the little the dragonfly before like when it's the oh gosh I can't remember what it's called but it's like a little fish thing <laughs> it's not a fish uh my biology is just totally terrible Fortunately, I'm not a biologist, I'm a tarot reader. But um, anyway, you, you, they're like little insects, anyway, underground, like it, under the water. So it's like this, there's like this energy of like suppression, like pushing you down, keeping you down, like keeping you underwater, 
keeping you small um that you kind of had to go through and i think like the i think i vaguely remember from what i've read about dragonflies like that's it's like a really they're often in like really murky ponds and things like that and then they 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 like butterflies they one day like they go through this sort of transformation and grow wings and then they fly off and they're like really beautiful shimmering colors and it's kind of like yeah it's symbolic of transformation it's symbolic of having grown through like a really murky dark difficult situation that that acted as an initiation and transformed you into this like beautiful self that's like very um like shines your light you know you spread your wings you have that freedom um and then you're like this spark of light that guides and pulls others along as well and create it's like you, you then magnetically like attract your tribe and you have this like you create this solidarity with people like people feel this sense of solidarity with you like you are this warrior for them because of what you've been through um so yeah with um metrogenia and shape-shifting i just feel like they're guiding me to read the book so 34 okay subconscious healing so the key words are subconscious healing synchronizing inner and outer worlds shape-shifting time travel transcendence transcendence of illusion and yeah dragonflies are a lot to do with like transcending illusion as well so yes yes i'm getting it now so yeah with the take control of your own narrative and like if you've been gaslit or like you've been manipulated in some way made to believe something that isn't true like living under an illusion you know and that, again that could be through some sort of cultural thing it could be through living under patriarchy right it could be through like a family thing it could be within a relationship but there's just been some sort of a like uh, lies or illusions or like believing something that isn't true believing something particularly about yourself because it's to do with like your own narrative the story you tell yourself about yourself so there's something to do with like transcending that that this like dragonfly medicine is coming through so um in reverse it says obsessive thoughts illusionary facade addiction self-abandonment unable to grow and stagnancy I definitely feel like because one of the key core wounds with narcissistic abuse is self-abandonment because you you never had your true self recognized or your needs recognized because of the narcissistic abuse um so often your your permeate patterns continue to permeate patterns in your life where you will continue to self-abandon and attract the same kinds of people that keep keep you stuck in that illusion of believing that you're unworthy of you know love you know having self-worth like you know um unconditional love you know having your needs met that you you know you have a right to have your needs met you have a right to have boundaries all that kind of thing so um you you can end up like repeatedly self-abandoning yourself in either relationships in the you know even in the workplace in all sorts of situations in friendships everything um so i feel like for um as I'm kind of tuning into your energy though, pile number two, I don't really feel like I'm not picking up a strong vibe that any of you are in this kind of dynamic now. I feel like this is something that you've mostly healed from, or if not fully healed from, you've kind of moved away from that and you are in the process or have already kind of reclaimed your narrative. It's like you've already gone through that, you know, transformation from the little insect to this, this dragonfly, like you've kind of found your strength you've cut the cords of that like toxic situation you've seen the illusion that it put you under you've kind of maybe already gone through all the self-abandonment and then like um rescued yourself kind of thing like you know stood out for yourself like pulled yourself away from the situations created good boundaries it's like you've gone through the initiation and like you you've been sort of reborn as this like spiritual warrior essentially um very strong energy pal to to have gone through this kind of stuff especially yeah it doesn't even have to be though if your if your uh, life past twenty two or life path eleven, whatever life path you are, um, or it could be like a destiny number somewhere in your numerology chart if it's not your life path number. But yeah, definitely. Also with initiation as well, the astrological ruler is Saturn and Neptune. Neptune can be linked with uh, deception and illusion, um, and Saturn is um, can definitely be linked with like initiation and that sense of like getting to a point where you 
because it's to do with like limits. Saturn can be to do with limits. So it's like setting, getting to that point where you don't self-abandon anymore and you set boundaries because again, Saturn is boundaries. You know, it's a, a boundary planet. It has the ring around it. And that's what I'm kind of getting the vibe from. It's like you've had to get to a point of like setting, you've been forced to set boundaries with people you've been forced to put that like ring of protection around you you've been forced to set limits on like how other people can like you know like to stop other people from controlling you or to stop other people from taking your energy and actually it's funny we're talking about Saturn and then this initiation card gosh all these all these little anti-nudity measures <laughs> ridiculous but anyway in this initiation card we've got like a ring um and it's kind of like the color of Saturn. Saturn's kind of like a orangey peachy color. So very interesting. Um, that there's like, yeah, it's like a ring of protection. Like you've had to go through that initiation and then set that, that like ring of protection, like protect yourself, protect your energy, protect your spirit. Um, like to be able to kind of, yeah, it's like kind of, you've had to sort of really claw your way out of something, really had to fight for yourself, I feel like. So let's see. The indigenous peoples of Southeast Asia have valued the power of this rainforest tree, the Mitrogenia, for thousands of years and have used it as a poultice to treat wounds as well as for a treatment of a variety of symptoms, including stress, pain, fatigue, and fever. Like coca leaves in the South American highlands, fresh leaves from the Mitrogenia tree are chewed for energy and stamina throughout the day. Mitrogenia was revered among monks in Asia as it assisted them during long periods of meditation by providing focused attention and positive energy. As early as the 19th century, cretonne became well known as an opium substitute and quickly became a curative treatment for withdrawal from opium addiction. Interesting, it's talking about addiction and withdrawal because quite often coming out of like narcissistic, narcissistic abusive relationships, um, particularly like romantic relationships, they are often very highly addictive in nature and coming out of them can actually feel like a withdrawal from a... a like the therapist that I worked with, the amazing goddess therapist that I worked with when I went through my healing for coming out of a narcissistic abusive relationship about eight years ago now, I think it was, maybe more than that. Yeah, about eight years ago. Um, she said coming out of, like going cold turkey from that type of relationship, like cutting cutting cords straight away and like just moving apart completely and setting boundaries immediately is like going through like almost like the level energetically speaking because of the, the like energy of that type of addiction that type of addictive relationship energetically it's like um going through like a like a heroin opium addiction withdrawals it's like you get the same physiological withdrawals so you, some of you might have gone through something like that so very like yeah difficult intense very intense very initiating experiences so yeah it became more popularized in the west due to metrogenia's use in thailand malaysia and surrounding areas helping those with morphine dependence metrogenia embodies elements of both saturn and neptune as it profoundly relieves and decompresses the muscul musculoskeletal system while granting a freeing and euphoric feeling to the body mind used in the right amounts it can greatly assist those with addiction so yeah it could it could be that some of you have gone through we had a little bit with excuse me, with part one about addiction, but in a very different way. Um, with this, I kind of feel like it's relationships mostly rather than like say drug or alcohol or anything like that. Though it could have looked like other addictions, but um, yeah, I feel kind of more strongly it's like an addiction to the narcissist, an addiction to the controller, an addiction to the, even though like, in in having that you often you're aware that like it's unhealthy or it's destructive or it's painful or whatever and that that's kind of part of the pain but I feel like most of you have kind of cut the cords of that so you know I bow down to you that is amazing I really hope for your sake all of you part number two that you are out of the, that situation and you have strong strong boundaries protective boundaries around you to stop anyone being able to manipulate or control you own your narrative take you know like gaslight you in any way because yeah that's so important so the guidance for this card is the balanced side of metrogenia represents the ability to shapeshift and adapt across realities 
Like the dragonfly, Metrogenia grants us the power to break through the illusionary facade we accept as reality, providing us the freedom from pain in order to break through limiting illusions. Yeah, exactly. That's what you are in the process of doing or have done. And maybe this is something that you'll help others do is break through limiting illusions that are probably related to conditioning or some kind of like undermining situation, some kind of an oppressive situation in your life. Dragonfly like Metrogenia helps us initiate subconscious healing from the trauma experienced from endless cycles of pain and suffering. Yeah, I definitely am so sorry, Paul, too. I feel like you have gone through, oh, I feel like you have gone through a bucket load of trauma in your life, um, pro quite possibly more than once. Um, yeah, it could be two, three, four times maybe, because quite often, like I said, you attract that pattern. If, if you've had it in childhood, you attract it in relationships and adulthood as well. So dragonfly medicine invites us to seek out the parts of our habits that have gone unchanged, unnoticed and stagnant. Ask yourself, have I tended to the changes I've been wanting to make? Don't get lost in the labyrinths of self-doubt. Break free from elusive belief systems that hold back your transformation. Beautiful. Yeah, and we kind of see these figures like kind of, yeah, like sort of floating, like breaking free, like having that freedom of mind. Yeah, taking control of your own narrative kind of thing. I feel like with productivity here and initiation and warrior goddess, I'm kind of getting this vibe that, and taking control of your own narrative actually, this sort of section here, I'm getting this vibe that like, once you've kind of gone through the like healing and that like dragonfly process if you like, and the full initiation, um, you know, being really init being initiated into like your power, um, and your wisdom and like also it's said in the book about like the she knows that the betterment of ourselves lies in our actions and the lessons drawn from our experience so once it's kind of like you you're you can really own that and like you're not still being triggered by it anymore it's like you can then shift into what the the um life path number 22 does best which is the master builder of the life path is, is shifting into this like productivity state where you can create all this beautiful growth and this beautiful it's like you use it as i'm kind of getting like fertilizer like all that mulch all that pain all that suffering is like fertilizer for you to grow the most beautiful garden that was the initiation was like being able to alchemize that pain into wisdom alchemize that suffering into like empathy alchemize you know all your experiences into being able to be a guide for others being able to share that wisdom with others um it's like it all it it, it all became like fodder for you kind of thing um and I see in this card here, it talks about like the, the great mother as well. I feel like this is kind of the, the like the great mother sort of overseeing you. So for some of you, like with this priestess energy, you might be, you know, maybe if this was a female figure, because we've got this sort of like, it looks like a kind of female hands here holding the, the string. So maybe this was a maternal figure who was um, narcissistically abusive or abusive in some way or manipulative or something. Um, and I feel like maybe part of your healing has been to like connect with a greater sense of m mother energy, like as in the great goddess, um, you know, the, the mother goddess, the earth goddess as well. I'm getting a lot of like sort of earthy energy here as well. Like maybe get, getting out in nature could have been very healing for you or could be very healing for you. Um, but yeah, there's just something about kind of like using your experiences using your suffering as as like fertilizer to grow this like beautiful garden um and then maybe also as well this could be you like then in turn becoming you know as a priestess it's like you you take on the mantle of acting as a channel for the goddess acting as a like you know receptor as a as a embodiment of the goddess and you can then in turn guide others as well um like new initiates kind of thing you can guide guide them through reclaiming their own narratives seeing through illusions 
um, finding their own truth. Yeah, wow, beautiful energy. Let's get some tarot. Mm -hmm. Let's see what have we done with the roses. So as I mentioned, we're going to use our tarot. I've already pre-shuffled, so let's just get straight in. So Goddess Saraswati, Spirit, we have some guidance for what pile... Woo, that came out fast. I haven't even said anything yet. What pile two needs to know about aligning with the essence. We've got four of swords with helmet of Clint. So four of swords is, yeah, it's all about like healing really you know being kind of pulled back held back from this productivity it's kind of like having a period of rest having a period of downtime being pulled away from the fray being pulled away from like needing to sort of you know produce anything it comes after the three of swords which is often to do with heartbreak and betrayal or an ending of some kind so you know, it could be that you've gone through that recently or at some point in the past and you're still in the process of healing from that. But it's just a lot around, like, generally speaking, going through a sort of a healing and protective process as well, um, where, like, you can, you can clear your energy, you can, like, draw this, like, you know, boundary around you and no one can come into that space while you just, like, fully go into your like sort of healing cave like we've got the priestess in a cave here and then receive the wisdom as symbolized by the owl as well receive any sort of wisdom that you need like do that process of alchemizing that pain into wisdom so i'm just going to get i'm not i this or this some um, tarot deck rather is quite new and i am working my way through learning about all the amazing historical women in this book but i haven't learned all of them yet so bear with me while i just look up because there might be some guidance or synchronicity or something about the person. So Hilma F. Clint, born 1862 to 1944 in Sweden. Upright means meditation, spirituality, philosophical contemplation. Um, so it's talking about she had an interest in spiritualism. Yeah, so it's kind of talking about this like initiation into like spirituality. So yeah, maybe taking time out to like learn more about spiritual things read spiritual books be really initiated into like a certain spiritual tradition or becoming a priestess maybe maybe doing my moon temple membership just gonna put a little plug in there um i don't know why i said that in that accent <laughs> um helma have Clint's intense interest in spiritualism began to develop in 1880 when her 10 year old sister hermina died gosh yeah so maybe some of it um could have come from a painful experience in the past, something like in your family or something. It was soon after this loss that she started attending seances, hoping to communicate with Hermina. Um, we had a little bit in part one about people being a medium. So maybe for some of you, you have mediumship abilities or like channeling abilities. I think I spoke about being a channel, a channel of the goddess. So yeah, maybe you can also channel ancestors or like, you know, you might be into kind of seances, things like that. Don't have to be, but it's just that's, just some of the messages that are kind of sticking out. Then she ended up forming a spiritualist contingent of her own. Oh, they called themselves both the Friday group and the five as they met every Friday and were five in number. That's cool. They explored together. They explored different metaphysical and supernatural ideas through discussion and practice, meditating and praying through seances and automatic writing and drawing. They contacted this pantheon of spiritual beings. They named the high ones. Interesting. Helmut felt that one of the high ones of spirit named Amelia was directing her to create a series of paintings that dealt with her mystical explorations. Um, she began the expensive series of painting for the paintings for the temple. Blah 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 blah. She's worked on a series of paintings. It's talking about abstract art. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, Helmut did not intend to exhibit her works. Interesting, she'd received instruction from her spiritual guides, the guides that the world was not ready to see her paintings. Esoteric philosopher Rudolf Steiner, who met with Hilma in 1908, told her to wait at least 50 years before exhibiting the work. Um, wow, when Hilma died in 1944 at the age of 82, her will revealed that her works, an estimated 1,300 non-figurative paintings and 125 sketchbooks and notebooks could not be exhibited for 20 years. Her art remained unknown to the world at large until 1988 when her work was presented at the Nordic Association for Art Historians Conference. Wow. The 2000s and 2010s saw a renewed interest in Helmer's paintings and supernaturally guided method of creating, resulting in her work being featured in exhibitions internationally. 
In 2018, the Solomon uh, Guggenheim Museum mounted the exhibition Helmut F. Clint, Paintings for the Future. Wowza, that's amazing. There's so much work, There's so many of the stories in this, um, and I just saw 3131 on the call, by the way, so that could be a significant angel number for someone, but so many of the women on this book, it's like, some of them are well-known ones, like Jane Austen and stuff like that, that you've heard of, and like, you know, like, Nef like Nefert Nefert what's her name, Nefertari, um, Marie Curie, you know, things like that, that, you know, you study at school and whatever, but like, a lot of them are just ones that you know it's like I had not heard of this this person and they, they did these amazing things that just yeah you just you just don't really hear about and um but that's that's kind of incredible so I feel like reading this bit Homer F. Clint embarked on a spiritual journey in the midst of a successful art career that changed her life forever although her practices were influenced by the cultural movements of the day the works inspired by her explorations were an expression of her unique inner life as an individual yeah that's a kind of strong thing like you have a a strong inner life i feel like and maybe all the painful experiences that you've been in is like initiating you into being more productive with that inner life like using your incredible inner life that you've had to create or that you've had that you've had to rather that has evolved over time by virtue of like everything that you've gone through so yeah, the Four of Swords is a card that signifies a need for introspection for quiet contemplation. Its appearance in your reading suggests that you need to step back from your daily routine. Yeah, I think I mentioned that about pulling back and all the things you're used to doing and creating. Does the path you are on feel right to you or do you feel you need a change? Evaluate your path so far. Take time to rest and think about what you find interesting. This card's appearance in your reading might also suggest you've recently experienced a stressful period or that you're grieving a loss. If so, you need to take time to alleviate your stress or grief. The Four of Swords requests you keep in mind these questions. What can you do to relax and rejuvenate? What ideas, however far out they may be, draw your attention? How can you create a sense of tranquility so that you're open to whatever ideas the universe brings you? Wow, I love that. Yeah, we just see this person kind of like sitting and thinking. So, um, but a lot of purple energy around, which is like connected to the third eye chakra and the crown chakra. So yeah. In order to align with your essence, pile number one, I feel like you've gone through quite a powerful initiatory process, but like there's maybe still some integration to do and you'll all be at slightly different stages with that, of course. Um, and it may be that some of you have already done something productive with some of this like wisdom and this, this, uh, this initiation work and this spiritual you know this spiritual um awakening that you've gone through but for others of you it might be that there's there's this need to kind of take a little bit of time out and heal from like fully heal fully integrate all the lessons and and tune into like what your soul is calling you to do next um i feel like you're going through this sort of transition this shape-shifting sort of process so you're being called to kind of like pull back from like your normal kind of output um so to speak let's get let's get one or two more these are quite intense cards that <laughs> that our tarot and they have a lot of guidance in the guidebook so i probably won't pull too many but let's get a little bit more energy so what else does pal <clears throat> excuse me what else does pal two need to know about aligning with their soul essence hmm. What else does Pal 2 need to know? Oh, there we go. Oh, another one I haven't heard of. Okay, I haven't heard of either of these. Interesting. So we've got Keeper of Pentacles, Sarah Breedlove. And we have, which I think is the, the King of Pentacles. I'll check in a second. And Ace of Swords, which is Bessie Coleman. So we've got, I love that we're starting with Four of Swords and then moving to Ace of Swords, which is like a new beginning. In, rela in relation to like an idea, swords is related to the mind and ideas and inspiration and knowledge. So I feel like this is like this new beginning in something that you've learned or some sort of lesson or wisdom that you've integrated and you're like starting a new path where you're able to use that. And we've got all these butterflies. Oh my gosh, we had a lot of butterfly symbolism on part one. So there may be some overlaps between one and two, but I feel like where part one was... Um, 
there were yeah there's definitely some overlaps where part one was sort of therapy vibes and kind of like holistic healer shaman kind of vibes part two is definitely more kind of priestess more about sort of going on your own journey to like rediscover yourself reintegrate aspects of your shadow um sorry if that just blanked then it just came up with a message about the the power um I'm just seeing again like the, these words it looks like a sort of newspaper which is like a story it's like a trail following the trail of like the story because I feel like you've had someone take control of your narrative you've had someone tell you a story about yourself your whole life and part of aligning with your soul essence is like rewriting your story it's like carving out your own path like finding the words that that are meaningful to you and I feel like you're going to have this new beginning you, you know we've got butterflies here which is symbolic of transformation so you've gone through that like caterpillar phase gone through the chrysalis and been re and you're in the process of being reborn as a butterfly or you have been reborn as a butterfly so uh and i feel like once you're able to like take this time out and integrate this wisdom and take control of your own narrative and step into this productive energy of like using all of that fodder I don't know why they're giving you that word it's a strange word but using all of that yeah that crap that happened to you as as like fodder as fertilizer as like inspiration for the mix as like galvanization to like push you ahead to create and produce things in the world um that is going to bring you abundance in some way I feel like but there might be a more nuanced message so let me just have a look at both of these cards briefly I won't read out too much about the story although they are quite interesting they are interesting to me but they might not be to everyone and i don't want to make the reading crazy long so let's have a look sarah comment below if you do like this deck and you do like hearing about these people and i'll keep that in mind for future readings but for now i'll keep it try and keep it brief so sarah breedlove united states prosperity the upright means prosperity discipline entrepreneurship and innovation yeah i think this card productivity talked about like innovation and entrepreneurship as well like growing your own thing so yeah possibly creating your own business around like it could be anything around sort of healing from this type of thing around like helping people take back their their you know their voice their narrative helping people with narcissists who've gone through narcissistic abuse helping people with like reconnect with the great mother with the goddess energy with feminine energy um could be any number of things it's not so much a life path reading it's more about the essence and it'll it'll that essence will express itself and um, will manifest itself in a variety of different ways um but let's just read a little bit about goodness so it's talking about this lady she was the first african-american female millionaire his fortune was born of mit interesting his fortune was born of misfortune that is that is kind of the key i think for you your fortune will be born of your misfortune it's like you can create again you can fertilize use use that shitty situation as fertilizer to create fortune for yourself to create a new beginning for yourself so yeah it's talking about how she was a laundress and after a few years on the job she experienced hair loss as a result of being exposed to like caustic laundry soap ingredients goodness many other poor black women she knew in her line of work were also suffering from scalp diseases hair loss or both because their exposure to harsh cleaning agents and poor nutrition oh my gosh that's appalling ashamed of her affliction she wrapped her head tidy in a head scarf every day which may have caused further damage to her scalp and hair and then she experimented with different remedies blah, 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 blah. it's talking about that whole process and then she tried products with a local black businesswoman who made and sold hair care products and the word of mouth approach was born of necessity as products for Afri african americans were not widely accessible uh oh my gosh it's really long so i'm not going to read all this because they will make the reading like 100 years long but um <sighs> i feel like there was a film about this woman why does why is this story vaguely ringing a bell maybe there was um but let's see what is the kind of core thing spirit guide me to the sentences i'm meant to read she created a restorative ointment based product 
She felt she could solidly stand behind. She called it wonderful hair grower and started selling it door to door. She ordered business cards to hand out to potential clients at churches, social gatherings and charity events, drum up sales. Interesting. Uh, well, eventually in 1910, she sought to establish a factory and business headquarters. And eventually like Madden, CJ Walker Manufacturing Company was incorporated. Her newfound wealth enabled her to contribute significantly to her community as a philanthropist. Um, and report, the newspaper reported she stands today as the richest Negro in America and she made it herself. That's not my words, by the way. That is from the book. That is from the report at the time in 1910. So I'll just say that. Uh, yeah, and she helped serve as a community centre for these working class black citizens. Oh my gosh, it's really long. It's like four pages. So then she did a lot of other things. Okay, so <laughs> let's read the guidance to finish off. As Sarah Breed loves wealth and prosperity, grew as a result of her dedicated entrepreneurship, she worked to increase the wealth and resources of her employees and their community. So yeah, definitely with like Life Plus 22, like I mentioned, they are master builder and they often want to like use their experience and they're like, they're often very visionary. They often have these big visions for improving humanity. So it could be that like once you've gone through your own healing process and integration process um, here with the Four of Swords, you'll you'll figure out a way to like use this for something. If it's not like directly in terms of like the specific thing that you've gone through where you're then creating some sort of a support system for people specifically with that, it's like you're just still going to use that as motivation to like, you know, create your own nar narrative to go your own way to become an entrepreneur or to create some sort of a like better world for other people. If it's not through being an entrepreneur, then it could just be through some other cause or like, you know, um, through, you know, something related to your job or through something that you do for money. It could even be a side hustle or something like that. Um, and and also, yeah, it's like kind of working to help other people who have maybe gone through some sort of oppression or something um, or difficulties or whatever. So, yeah, she worked to increase the wealth and resources of her employees and their community. Similarly, the Keeper of Pentacles represents a stable, compassionate leader with a good business sense and a kind heart. This card signifies a wise point of view, a result of coming from a humble beginning and earning your own way up to a more prosperous end. This card appearance in your reading means that either you or a person in your life is loyal and dependable. You can trust their judgment in financial and business matters as they likely have a gift in those areas. If the Keeper of Pentacles appears in your reading when you're wondering about your own professional prospects, consider it an affirmation that things are more likely than not to happen in your favor, easing you along the path to your goal. This card's presence asks you to consider the following questions. Precisely what endeavours of yours would you like to result in more prosperity? How can your individual abundance benefit your loved ones and your community? And what does material wealth and security mean to you personally? Ooh, good questions. So that's the Keeper of Pentacles. And then the Ace of Swords is, let's see, a little bit about Bessie Coleman. Clarity, so the upright key aspects are clarity, insight, intellect, and new purpose. Yeah, I definitely feel like it's interesting, new purpose, Ace of Swords coming out under initiation. It's like this this process was to initiate you into your purpose so whatever you've been through that you've had to heal from whatever suffering or pain or difficulties or oppression or control that you've been through has been to initiate you into your purpose into a new purpose as this like priestess or kind of warrior spirit this like entrepreneur or like someone who creates better communities or creates a better world for people I feel like you have a strong sense of purpose and a, you're a strong, like, fighter. Um, it, I definitely feel like for you, Paul, number two, like, you have a specific path that you're meant to be on. And also, I forgot to mention with the, um, you chose the uh, Blossom Agate, and this is all about, like, blossoming into your true potential. So I feel like this could be a really good crystal for some of you, by the way. Um, I love it. I absolutely love it. It's really lovely energy. Um and yeah, it can help you kind of, yeah, blossom into your full potential, blossom into your purpose. So let's see. I'm just going to quickly scan it. I apologize. I can't. I'm using a different phone at the moment and I can't um, pause the video. Otherwise, I would pause it and read this and then come back. But I'm just going to have to do it on camera. So like, feel free to go and make a cup of tea or something while I'm scanning this briefly. 
Uh, so she was basically told by someone that uh, her brothers returned from World War One and said like you ain't never gonna fly and she said that's it you just called it for me so maybe you've had some sort of like someone tell you like you can't do this you can't be blah 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 xyz whatever it is like an entrepreneur or you can't work for yourself or do your own thing like you know this could even be a boss that, that like manipulative thing it could be like you want to go and do your own thing and your boss is kind of really controlling and kind of keeps you you know wants to keep you working for them like 24 7 sort of thing um but she ended up obtaining sponsorship to travel to france and after taking courses she secured a passport and funds and she was accepted to, accepted into a flight school in Paris as well. In June 1921, Bessie, who was of mixed race, became the first black American woman and the first Native American woman to earn an international aviation license. Wow, that's impressive. She was a media sensation when she returned to the US making headlines and papers. So yeah. She brought with her credentials certifying that she qualified as an aviatrix. And she took all her achievements all in stride and used her newfound celebrity to encourage other black Americans to pursue aviation saying the air is the only place free from prejudices and just doing it, it's talking about like prejudice and I spoke about oppression here there could be and like this sort of activism energy or like fighting for rights or civil rights or fighting from oppression so maybe some of you have gone through like racial discrimination or something or prejudice because of like your socioeconomic class or something along those lines or cultural or you know, whatever it might be, or race, um, or gender as well, like, because she got told, like, as a woman, she can't fly, but she was like, want to bet? I'm going to do that, so anything that, you could have that, like, fighter energy in you as well, like, where people have told you all your life, like, you can't do something because you're whatever, for whatever reason, and you're like, just watch me, like, I'm gonna do it, um, so yeah, she ended up, she was in, like, air shows, and she, Ah, da, 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 story about it. one of her planes crashed or something. She purchased her own plane in 1925. Oh, this is interesting. She returned to her hometown in Texas because Texas was still segregated. Oh my gosh, this is in 1925, I think. The managers planned to create two separate entrances, entrances for African Americans and white people to get into the stadium. Oh my goodness. Coleman refused to perform unless there was only one gate for everyone to use. You go, girl. That's awesome. After many meetings, the managers agreed to have one gate, but people would still have to sit in segregated sections of the stadium. She agreed to perform and became famous for standing up for her beliefs. Yeah, so I definitely get this, like, you know, you have strong beliefs, you have strong integrity, like, you have this this warrior fighter energy where you, you're going to use your experiences to fight for other people as well to stand up for other people you've had to learn to stand up for yourself and yeah it's kind of like this this energy of this like mother protector goddess like protecting this this child here it's like you've had to do that with your own inner child and then now you can do that process for other people as well like stand up and protect others too um so Oh, and then she unfortunately there was like a problem with the engine and her plane crashed but it's talking about she connected her passion for aviation with her moral principles by promoting equality and denouncing prejudice with every air show stunt and public speaking event the ace of swords represents the clarity of purpose that results from having a goal and making a plan to achieve it having a goal making a plan to achieve it that's that productivity energy coming through which is the saturn saturn energy as well and I think it spoke about with the priestess card as well, like willpower. So it's saying something about master's new skills, consolidates power, elevates her knowledge. Yeah. So like definitely using your, use yeah, like having goals, using your willpower to like, to step into your purpose. This card symbolizes the moment, you know, you must achieve this goal as well as what you must do to achieve it. It's a moment when the heart, mind, and spirit are all in alignment. You're prepared to face challenges, make sacrifices, and speak your mind to move forward. What's your next big idea? What are the connections between your personal calling and values that you hold most dear? And what's the first step on this path to achieving your goal? Beautiful. So let's finish up with the warrior goddess. If 
few of guys are still with me. Well done. It's a long reading today, but I hope it's been supportive for you. So this is not a time to play it safe, nor is it time to an another to take the lead in your life. Yeah, that's that. Taking back your narrative. You need to believe in yourself and trust that the instincts instincts guiding you are correct if you need to take action do it speak up say yes say no trust your inner truth completely it's kind of very similar to what we were just talking about with this ace of swords be bold the universe will answer your boldest actions with affirmation and you'll move through the consequences of your actions with grace and courage ending up exactly where you are meant to be so the spiritual guidance is you are ready life has been preparing you your experiences have made you stronger and wiser exactly as what i've been saying all along life has been preparing you all these negative experiences have made you have been an initiation to make you stronger and wiser you have spirit and you have courage believe in yourself you are a warrior goddess an empowered divine woman trust that your foundations are strong Put your faith in the universe. It has been your life coaching guide all along, helping you build up your inner resources, encouraging you to realize the power that has always been within you. And what do we say about power just before with the priestess card? You've always had this power. The universe believes in you. When you feel it is time to take a step, take it with confidence. When you ask for help from the universe, ask with boldness and total confidence that your prayers will be answered in the best possible way. You have the right to require that your personal space be respected. Yes, what do they say about protecting your boundaries, protecting your space with that Saturn and the ring, like the, the boundary around you? Definitely. I love how it's all kind of syncing up with this card, like all the messages that are kind of being woven together. So you have the right to require that your personal space be respected. You have divine permission and encouragement to claim your rightful place in the world. Yes. You are meant to say no to behavior that is dishonest, manipulative, and bullying. Look at that. What was I saying about manipulation? You have a right to say no to that. No to manipulation. The warrior goddess uses her sacred anger to set a boundary. To set a boundary, as I talked about with that card. And speak her truth, not to attack another. She uses her inner fire to live with integrity, even if the right choices for her seem hard or frightening at the time. She knows that the universe has her back, so she is willing to be true to herself no matter what. She places integrity above all else. She knows that compromising her self-respect to win a battle will end up losing her the war. And the sacred ritual is, I'll hold it up to the camera as well, if possible, lay face down on the floor with your forehead touching the earth. As you breathe out, you will now release any doubts or fears into the earth. She will take them from you, transform them, and send them back to you as renewed energy, which you can absorb as you breathe in. Yeah, I definitely picked up with the productivity card as well and this sort of beautiful nature scene, like going out into nature could be quite um, healing and restorative for you as you go through this sort of four of swords. Um, but yeah, that is all that those... Bleh. <laughs> try that again those are all the messages i have for you part number two i hope that resonated for you leave me a comment below or drop me an emoji if it did it really helps my channel so so much hit the like button if you enjoyed it it helps my uh, helps tell the algorithm what content is resonating hit the subscribe button if you're not already part of my community i would love to have you here if you feel called to check out my moon table membership i'll leave the link to that below otherwise all the best for aligning with the truth of your soul and i will see you in all the essence of your soul i should say and i will see you in the next reading all my love bye hello part number three if you chose card number seven with the stargazer or the sodalite tower this will be your reading on messages from goddess saraswati on aligning with the essence of who you are so i'm going to start off by reading from the compendium of witches which is this card for the stargazer to give you a little bit more of an insight into this archetype. So the stargazers, oh sorry, to start off with the keywords are research, patience, dedication, and confidence. The stargazer's eyes wander around the firmament. She is looking for answers, armed with faith and unwavering determination. As the clouds disperse to show the heavenly arch blossoming with stars, she feels embraced by its greatness, not crushed. Representing our ability to patiently work towards our goals, the stargazer promotes confidence in our vision, especially in times when our spirit is tested. About the witch. Sionia was born in Palmyra in the 4th century, at the time when the city was under the rule of Rome. She discovered her interest for the study of the sky and celestial objects at an early age, and spent her life working as an astronomer and philosopher in Antioch, during a time of great and often violent transformation of the religious structures that saw the rise of Christianity. Okay, so let's get into your 
oracle cards which i've pre-pulled and then we're going to take a look at i've got the intuitive night goddess tarot for you guys i'm going to pre sorry i'm going to live shuffle some tarot cards for you guys as well to get a bit more guidance and then we'll finish up with the love your inner goddess by alana fairchild card with a little ritual there so it'll be quite an in-depth reading so let's get into it card number 11 artemis she of the world with mercy okay you've got card number 31 with universe we're all just stardust okay we've got stargazer and stardust so double star synchronicity there we've got perception we've got or you've got card number four rue with protection you've got dragon goddess is that in the shot yeah just Okay, and finally, we've got card number 20 with Daring Dreamer and change the way you see, not the way you look. Okay, so let's move these over a wee bit, whoopsie. Okay, pile number three. So right off the bat, I get the vibe that I'm kind of getting a strong, strong creative vibe coming through. It's kind of what I channeled when I first started pulling your cards and I got a bunch of kind of downloads about your energy as I was kind of tuning into your energy we've got this figure of the stargazer writing here at night so some of you may be writers or you may want to be writers or you like writing or creative writing could be um also research as well it could be non-fiction writing maybe you do writing for a job like copywriting or something or you like studying, you might be, if you're not sort of a writer in the sense of like wanting to kind of publish anything, you, you may just enjoy the act of study and research because it did speak of research, this card. Um, you might enjoy learning um, lots of different like esoteric subjects in particular. I'm kind of picking up, you know, with a stargazer, it spoke about her, um, you know, learning about teaching philosophy. So maybe some of you you know, you might have studied philosophy at uni or like a lot of different esoteric subjects or like mysticism or, you know, um, different like global religions, you know, spirituality studies or, um, you know, psychology, sociology, a lot of the arts is kind of the arts and humanities is kind of what I'm getting. Um, that doesn't have to be for all of you. For others of you, it might be like I feel like some of you are kind of like some of you might have studied say something like literature or you might want to like write or publish something perhaps more like creative writing like a novel or something like that I feel like I'm kind of getting a strong um, sense of imagination with this like universe where it will stardust I'm kind of in the stargazer I'm kind of getting this vibe as well with daring dreamer as well that some of you might have like you know, often been like the daydreamer of your class, you might have often gotten told off or something a lot as a kid, because you, you like daydreaming, you were kind of always away with the fairies, or like often your imagination, like coming up with stories or ideas, or like just little imaginary worlds, or like film ideas or something. Um, kind of like, yeah, often the sort of, in the starry realms, if you like, like kind of, yeah, just in, in this sort of imaginative world, in the world of fantasy. Um, yeah, I'm kind of, I just heard like JK Rowling or something. So maybe like some of you, um, you know, what you write is like fantasy books or something like that, or you want to write something like that. Um, or you loved, you know, that just could be confirmation, like you loved Harry Potter, you know, you loved the world of, world of magic, all that kind of stuff. Um, so it could be something like that. For others of you, I kind of get more of a like perhaps more of a research more of a sort of perhaps non-fiction like wanting this card talked about like wanting to find answers so maybe some of you like look to the stars for like answers about life like look to sort of you know like you know literally the stars like as an astrology or something like look to understand the movement of the planets to like find answers about life and about yourself and all of that kind of thing or to find like different perceptions about the world and you know your personality and everything that makes you up or it could be like you um you look to like uh, you know sort of like I'm just kind of what I heard really randomly but I saw an image of like Plato or Socrates or like other sort of I don't know philosophers or writers or whatever from the from you know the past and heard like old dead people so maybe some of you just a little bit 
um, I mean, I guess they are factually. Um, but yeah, it could, it could be that like some of you, you know, you, you look to the past, you look to kind of like, um, ancient traditions or like, um, classical texts or classical writing. Um, I'm kind of getting a strong sort of classical vibe from this this figure here and it talked about you know she was in Rome so maybe some of you live in Europe or you really like the European traditions um you know classical Greek classical um you know Rome all of that kind of like all the sort of poems all, all the poetry all the epic poetry like um I'm also hearing like um you know the the retellings now that are coming through like Circe and by Madeline Miller and all that you might love that me too me too um so I'm also getting like really strongly by the way look at the um the robe that this figure is wearing it's really similar to the like the over with the I don't know what you call that but the bit that kind of comes down the front I definitely get that you you guys especially with this sort of writing vibe and everything you guys are definitely Saraswati people i'm not gonna say women because it might it's not just women on my channel so uh however you identify you are saraswati you have that you know even though saraswati is a goddess it doesn't you know it's feminine and divine feminine energy it can manifest in anyone regardless of their gender um you can tap into that energy regardless of your gender so i just feel like you embody that saraswati energy like this energy of like um, being very wise, being very learned, being very like connected with your creativity, connected with that creative essence, being able to express yourself very eloquently. Um, you may have the gift of language, like Goddess Saraswati is the goddess of languages as well. Um, yeah, you may have the gift of language or the gift of like speech as well. She's also the goddess of speech. So maybe some of you, this is not just communication through writing, but also through speaking um, or through, you know, it could be like, um it could be sort of publishing your your ideas or things that you are interested in, in on like say social media or on a blog or um you know in some format like that or you do you know talks or debates or something um so yeah really really like knowledgeable very knowledgeable very wise as well like goddess Saraswati is not just like she she's both a goddess of uh like learning and education and like uh learned knowledge like that that you can learn through formal institutions and so forth and through study and all of that she's she's known uh i believe from the research that i did when i wrote the the blog post about saraswati um which i'll leave the link to that below in case you want to learn a bit more about it particularly because i feel like you have that her archetype within you part three uh I feel like she, um, it's like she, she's, a, she's referred to as like the goddess of students. She's, she's very like favored by, by students. So she's both about that sort of like learning and that sort of left brain say side of learning, but also creativity and inspiration and imagination and like creative writing and all of that as well. She's like the, the muse in a way she's she can really help you if you are a writer or some kind of you know you you write or you express yourself in some way or you're creative in some way calling on goddess saraswati can really help you to like activate if you're struggling with like connecting with your muse or coming up with creative ideas or inspiration for what you want to write next or do next or whatever you can like call on her and she will help you connect him with the right idea and then help the words to flow like certainly when I did her blog post I was blown away by how fast I did it compared with most of the other goddesses that can sometimes take several hours to like compile all the information and then like word it all and work out what bits I want to include and you know that whole editing process which you guys know if you're writers or you you've gone to like you know you've done some kind of study like trying to work out like which pieces of information you want to include or not right it's a whole process and there's a whole like adding things in taking them back out putting them back in you know like molding things but with her it was so fast the whole thing went like it just flowed so like I would really I just yeah thought I'd mention that it, it might it might come in handy for you but let's get in a little bit more detail into a little bit more depth about like kind of your energy I also get a strong vibe um that you really you really need a lot of freedom in your life pile number three to be able to express yourself I'm kind of think I'm just like 
handling the sodalite. I feel drawn to the sodalite right now. Sodalite is a throat chakra crystal. It helps you uh, express yourself. It helps you with uh, to like vocalize your ideas, to um, honor and verbalize your needs. Um, it can help you with, yeah, just kind of any form of expression at all. Um, particularly creative expression so it's a great stone for like writers or speakers or whatever um but I feel like you it's really important that you have this sort of like freedom and an opportunity to be like wild so that you can express yourself in the way that you need to kind of like away from some kind of like what I'm hearing is like a an institution or something where like you're expected to do things a certain way. Like so maybe for some of you, you've been to university and like maybe you were maybe you went quite high up in your studies, but then now you're you're breaking out on your own. And I feel like it's important for you to kind of go rogue go go rogue. Yeah, go rogue or go wild. Um, that's not a phrase I use very often, but yeah, go, go rogue and do your own thing and like have the freedom to like, sort of, yeah, like have the freedom to like gaze at the stars and just like f connect with your, your own wisdom, your own intuition. Um, and we've got, I'm just noticing as well with the perception card here, which has also got a lot of blue in the background, this card, this card, and this card, and your daring dreamer card, there's a lot of blue. So there's a lot of throat chakra um energy coming through with that that color blue there because the blue blue is linked with the throat chakra but also i'm seeing the third eye chakra being highlighted as well we've got hopefully you can see in the camera it's getting a little bit dark here because it's the evening's falling now but her um yeah her third eye is like highlighted here with this sort of circle on it so and i feel like that's really where you get that like inner perception there's something around like having the freedom and being able to be totally wild to like pursue your own knowledge quest for knowledge quest for learning to develop your own perception of things to develop your own mind about things like your own view on things um to like be able to download kind of like cosmic wisdom in a way I feel like you're yeah you're very connected you're very intuitive like you both have this you have this both intellectual learning capacity or this ability to like learn with your left brain or like understand concepts to kind of like you're very intelligent I feel like part number three but you also have this like instinct this wisdom this um yeah this this high highly evolved intuition is what I'm hearing um Let's talk about this Artemis She of the World and Rue with protection because I feel like there's something maybe that for you, part number three, you've gone through possibly some sort of a situation where you were maybe persecuted because this card, the Artemis She of the World card, talks about how like Artemis has to like flee because she's like persecuted by Hera because of the whole Zeus and Hera thing. You know, this is all in the myth, but essentially like she she flees and she becomes a protector for like those who are also um being persecuted uh like she's a protector of women particularly women in childbirth um young like children and uh animals so it's sort of like a protector of the innocent so you know this with this card talking about being a, artemis being this protector and then we've got the card rue with protection I feel like there's there's this theme coming through around like the need for you to protect yourself, your energy and your ideas, your creative ideas, like your creative babies. And I talk about this all the time on it always comes up in so many of my readings. And you guys have been on my channel for a while. Well, no, when I talk about creative babies, like it just there must be loads of you having loads of creative babies left right and center because it comes up all the time but basically it's like that thing of like protecting you know the the unborn child like the unborn creation like as you're still going through the process of like figuring out where you stand with it or what it's what it's going to be how it's going to evolve um you're very protective of that that sort of 
newly conceived idea. Um, yeah, I feel like there's something around needing needing to to be needing to keep it protected, needing to keep your ideas protected. Possibly because like maybe you have someone this could be coming back to like what I was talking about about needing the to be wild, needing to be free from some sort of like institution or group or like way of thinking, way of perceiving the world, like certain I like a certain structure or like certain like ideas or something that kind of dictate something should be, you know, just a certain perception of the world, a certain worldview or a certain way of writing even or a certain, you know, way of doing something, a way of studying, a way of presenting your research. Like I'm kind of getting the vibe of someone who maybe is a PhD student, right? And you did all this research on a certain thing, but it wasn't really right for you. Maybe maybe that you received some kind of like criticism or persecution or like just lack of support, lack of agreement with the work you were trying to do with the, with your ideas. Like people didn't maybe agree with your perception about something and you, you've had to like, or you're in the process of, or you're going to maybe leave that institution behind or that group so that you can be free and wild and go out in the wild world, the big wide world to like do it your own way, to like present this research in your own way, in a creative way and like present your ideas, present your perception on this rather than needing to do it under the auspices of that organization or university or structure or like way of writing or whatever it might be. Um, or like school of learning on hearing. So, it, you know, it could be say if this is to do with, you know, because I picked up someone who was maybe learning about a lot of like esoteric subjects, like maybe some of you've been studying something like, yeah, whether it was like some kind of spirituality, mysticism, astrology, could even be tarot, something like that. Um, and you've been learning it through a certain school or through a certain system. And now you're like, hmm. I have my own perception about this. I have my own intuition. I have my own wisdom. I need to like be guided by that. Like my ideas need space. To, they need freedom. They need this wild, like this Artemis energy. They need this wild to like be explored and see where they, how they blossom. It's like the daring dream. It's like dare to, dare to go a different way. I'm kind of getting, I'm getting strong. And I also talk about this figure quite a lot. Brene Brown, but I'm getting Brene Brown vibes. So, and she was, oh, is she might still be, um, a uh, like at university, and she did a lot of her research initially on vulnerability through the university, but then she kind of produced her books. You know, like they became like you know huge hits and everything, and she did her TED talk and all that about the the power of vulnerability or whatever it was called, and you know, she got a lot of slack from the, the, the academic community because I think something to do with, I forget why, something to do with her research, um, being like not really strict under the, like, whatever the, I can't even remember what school she was with. Was it sociology? I'm not sure. But anyway, you guys might know, but the point is <laughs> that whole story is like, yeah, she, she, learned a lot through her studies but she had to kind of go her own way and be free and dare to dream and in fact I think she has she has a book about daring dare dare greatly daring greatly something like that so that could be either you might have that book or that could be a useful book for you or like learning a bit more about Brene Brown or listening to a TED talk could be really helpful um or you may just you may already it could just be confirmation that you're like yes I love Renee Brown or I love what she did or like that's a similar storyline to something that you've gone through like a you know she's a similar archetype or like you've gone through something similar academically and like now you're kind of like breaking away from that a little bit and taking your ideas and like being daring with them and doing daring to do something different daring to like put out a different shock horror, like put out a different way of looking at the world, you know, put out this different perception of something, you know, it could even be political as well. Cause with that, like Artemis, she of the world and being, she was persecuted by Hera and then she became this like protector for everyone. So maybe like 
maybe this is like a political thing or maybe like you're like a um oh gosh what is that thing called when you're whistleblower maybe you you've been a whistleblower and now you're having to go into protection oh my gosh I wonder if there's anyone in the community who's like who's a whistleblower or like yeah or just you're just like daring to look at something in a different way like to 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 provide a different perception or just just provide your perception and and that could be something that in the environment you're in whether it's a maybe you write for an organization um you know you might write for a magazine you might be a journalist or you might write for a university or something or you know publish papers or do research you know because I had a strong research vibe like research came through with the stargazers so some of you might do research for you know an organization or a place of learning and I feel like you that was perhaps a necessary part of your path but it's like you have your own ideas you have your own perception on this and by staying with that and it's not to say you'll necessarily fully leave because Brene Brown I don't think she fully left the university where she had her post in fact she might still be there but like she published her own stuff kind of under her own company I think she has her own company now to be honest so you, so, you know it could be a similar path where you started off in that place of learning or in that organization and then you put your things out in your own name um or you you leave that environment so that you can publish your ideas put your ideas out in the world like maybe even you're in an environment where like you tried to put your ideas out on social media and you've gotten pers you've been pers persecuted for that or you've gotten a lot of slack because they're like you can't put this information out there or that goes against the position of the university or something I don't know it could just be some weird thing or you can't publish your ideas about whatever it might be um because you know like you're going against the organization like you're going against the company if you put your own ideas out there or something kind of like that I'm sort of I feel like there's a film oh okay I'm hearing the bold type this tv series which I love by the way hands up if you love the bold type it's so awesome um a few several years ago now that came out but um awesome tv series and the writer was it cat can't remember her name now the, the dark-haired girl um was a writer for a magazine oh, i vaguely remember they're trying they're showing me a scene but i can't really remember it i think was there something oh wait no hold on cat was the cat was the social media girl i think oh my gosh anyway there's something around yeah maybe it was cat the, the social media girl and she yes because she left that's right that's why they showed me that thank you okay um so she she was working for oh my gosh scarlet was it scarlet magazine and then she like she put some kind of she put some kind of views out there or she was like she was was it something to do with like her her girlfriend she was i can't remember now Anyway, she put her views out there and it was like not really okay. And I think she got fired or she she chose to leave so that she could like be free, be wild to like kind of do her own, do her own, put her own points of view out there. She was very outspoken and had a lot of like political points of view. She was very like left wing, I think anyway whatever that's way too specific the point is that they were showing me that there could be another example of like kind of a character you know that might resonate or like it might be a similar story where like you're part of a you write for a magazine super cool if you do I always wanted to do a job like that but like props to you if you manage to do that although I I hear it's really it's really hard and really intense and obviously with publishing being the way it is it must be very cutthroat um but yeah, maybe you're part of some sort of a like formal like publication and you could be doing like copywriting for them, social media for them, whatever it is, writing for them, journalism for them, research for them. And you have your own perception on things. You have your own ideas. You have your own wisdom. You have your own like connection to the universe, like where you can receive the truth about a lot of things, which you can't, you, you may be in your current environment, like you don't have the freedom to be able to like talk about that you know like I intuitively got a download this morning about <laughs> about the situation and blah 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 um and everyone around you is like yeah no you can't you can't just it's not backed up by fact um or whatever you know it could be something like that and it's like I feel like you have a different a different way 
of looking at things. Um, it's interesting, like this universe, we're all just stardust. It's kind of like maybe you, you, you have this very egalitarian way of looking at things like come on like we're all human we're all just stardust we're all made of the same thing like you know you could be quite um like have points of view about you know that kind of thing like stop racism stop injustice stop treating people differently because of whatever like we're all stardust we're all here to like we're all souls having a human experience or something. Like you could identify as a star seed as well. I just got that through with stargazer and stardust. But with oh shoot, I just noticed. Sorry, oh, I was meant to cover that up. <sighs> YouTube policy, not mine. Believe me, I would not be bothered about that. But um, I could get told off by YouTube, unfortunately. <sighs> so um, dragon goddess. Let's come over here to the dragon goddess. Um, this is to do with like. Also, oh my gosh, I'm just noticing another star. My gosh, you've got so many stars. We've got like the night sky here with like kind of stars in the distance. We've got the stars here. We've got stars on your Artemis She of the Wild card. I don't know if you can see that. If it focuses, is it going to focus? Probably can't see them. Okay, I promise there are stars there. <laughs> there's stars here. There's... There's stars there, there's stars around the head there, and then there's a, she's holding a star here. So, like, so many stars. You are a star, pile number three, I feel like. You're whatever, I mean, I'm, I'm naming, like, big people here, like Brene Brown, Kat from the bold type, even though she's not a real person, but you know what I mean. Like, you know, you, you're meant to be a star. You're meant to put your, your views, your your own perception out in the world I feel like I feel like you are very protected at this time your ideas are protected it's important for you to keep them protected as well to make sure that they're not that you're not um unfairly like persecuted for your points of view or I'm hearing sidelined interesting maybe some of you got I don't really know what that means that could be a journalistic thing or like a university thing you got sidelined like maybe you your piece was meant to be front and center and then it got pushed to the side where well, you got sort of sidelined in your along your career or something it's quite specific it might just be one person um but we've got the sun and pluto here and the sun is about shining your light being a star like being being confident and this card talked about confidence as well being confident to shine your light being confident to be who you are being confident to express your true self and Pluto is the god of the underworld, the god of power. It's related to power and can be related to political power. It can be related to things that get suppressed as well and then come to the surface. Like it's that energy of like, yeah, things that have gone underground and been hidden and suppressed. And then like Pluto will dredge that up from the the like underworld, the depths of the underworld and like, boom, bring it into light. Like, here you go what about this thing that's been hidden this whole time? So like, again, I'm kind of getting like that whole like journalistic investigative, like dive, you know, that's very Pluto energy, that that investigative journalist. Like I'm also seeing, I'm being shown the film. Um, oh my gosh, what was it? Uh, about the Me Too movement with Megan Tui and was it Jackie Cantor? I can't remember their exact names. Um the New York Times journalist who exposed the Harvey Weinstein scandal. Great film called, can't remember, Plemonek. My memory with when I'm channeling is so bad with names and things. She, is it called She something? Anyway, I'll link it below. Lots of, interesting, there's lots of, I don't normally have this many kind of popular culture references or film. Occasionally I do, but like, these are interesting. These are big figures and like interesting um, stories, archetypes of people that are coming through. So, um, you know, and they, for the work that they did, like they, they became quite, quite well known. I don't know if they, they might've won awards or something as well. Um, and, and also, you know, of course it, it helped, like they had to, ah, I'm getting an interesting story now. Like they had to protect the like identity of some of the women who were coming forward and then like it was all really like 
exposing a secret, exposing something that was really suppressed because the whole Weinstein thing it had covered it up for so long and all these women had just been like living with this trauma, you know, all these different women all over the place who'd all been assaulted by him. Um, and they had to kind of go and try and like do that deep dive of like getting the story and like trying to protect them. And like a lot of them didn't want their identity revealed because of course he'd forced them to sign like, uh, what is it called? Is it NDA or something? Or like a, like, um, that they couldn't, they couldn't then speak to the press basically, like, uh, whatever it is. Um, you know, paid them out essentially. And they were terrified. And a lot of them wouldn't come forward, but then like one or two did and then more and more. Um, and they sort of had to like provide protection and it was all really tenuous because it was like, what if like, you know, his legal team got hold of it and what if, you know, they go after these women and, but you know, they fought, they fought just like Artemis, how she like fights, fights and protects the rights of women and children and those less, you know, those who get persecuted. So it could be that you, you do something like that or like, you know, that's what your research will like uncover or something like this sort of investigation. Like you, you're, you're there to bring like a different story, a different perception, a different voice to a story, a different viewpoint, um, or like bring something to light that Pluto energy, like bringing something that's been suppressed or hidden to light, um, so that people can see it so that it's like out in the open, um, because you're meant to kind of protect these people that have also been, yeah, I'm getting this pretty fierce energy from you, Pile 3. There might be a little bit of overlap with Pile 2 for some of you, if you felt called to Pile 2, um, because there was a sort of activism energy with Pile 2 as well, but it got expressed in a very different way, more through spirituality and um, like being a priestess and kind of things like that. Whereas for you, Pile 3, I definitely feel more of a like writing, research, speaking, kind of Brene Brown type vibe um, going on. But coming back to the dragonfly goddess, first of all, dragon energy is very protective and also very strong. And we've got the color orange here. The dragon is, is linked with the color orange, which is the sacral chakra, which is all about creativity and passion and like a creative spark, um, that like fire, it's fire energy, you know, it's that creative spark for life. Um, so there's some, I feel like that there's something that you're passionate about. There's some creative passion that you have that is going to make you a star. And also this card talks about, it's not immediately obvious from the picture, but from what I know of this card, it talks about like, um, essentially like your lucky star, like, like wishing on your lucky star and, and, manifesting abundance and good fortune and good luck like dragons in, in some cultures are symbolic of like good fortune and abundance um so there's something to do with like your your perception your ideas your viewpoint don't let others like crash in on that detract from that gaslight you from that you know, kind of like Harvey Weinstein, like there's so many parts in that film. If you haven't, if you haven't seen it, I won't, I probably shouldn't go into it too much in case you want to watch it because it's amazing. Um, but like he, he just keeps, he keeps trying to like gaslight everyone through the whole thing. Like I never did that, blah, 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 you know, just, and so some of you might be dealing with some sort of situation like that. The reason that came to mind is like, you could have been in something similar where someone's tried to like criticize your ideas gaslight you force you to back down from your opinion to like you know bend to a certain viewpoint you know this could even be like say in your job like you might have a certain belief or something and they like your company is like forcing you to like bend to company policy and kind of like not do something that you believe in it could be something I'm just getting now as well it could be something to do with like with change the way you see, not the way you look. It could be that you've been persecuted or attacked for how you look or how you dress or like for your beliefs or religious beliefs or something for your, yeah, like how you perceive the world, something along those lines. Um, but definitely like what's coming through is like, we've got 
the star here, stars on so many of your cards, stardust and stargazers. So strong cosmic force energy coming through. You are a star. I feel like you are going to be a star in your life if you want that. Uh, maybe some of you don't. You might want to stay anonymous. But like for most of you, I feel like if you are willing to like embrace your star, like that could bring you a lot of fortune and abundance and like um, fame, essentially, like being well known for your work in some way. So let's have a look at the tarot now. So I've got the intuitive night goddess tarot. So yeah, interesting intuitive night goddess. Very, very intuitive. I felt like this had to be the tarot deck for you, pile number three. You're very, very switched on, very intuitive. So what does pile three need to know about aligning with their essence? What? Whoa, that came flying out. Queen of Swords. Yeah, truth. Swords are all about truth. And Queen of Swords, wow. This is amazing. I love this. This is so perfect for, like, your reading. Like, yeah, you are the Queen of Swords. This is this, is this stargazer, like, energy to a T. Like, you are... <laughs> I love the way she's standing. She's kind of like, back off. Like, I've got a sword. Like, <laughs> I've got the sword of justice on my side. I've got the sword of truth. Um, I feel like, yeah you are very wise you're very clear about like your mind your beliefs your truth you stand strong in that truth like a queen like you you embody that um they're telling me read the book <laughs> okay guys i'll just i'll just stop my little ramble and i'll just read from the book because it it is really well to be fair it's really well worded in here and it will just be a lot more eloquent than my rambling so if I can find it. Oh my gosh. Here it is. Never swords, blah, blah, blah. Queen of Swords. Queen uses her sword to navigate forward with confidence. Yeah, we talked about confidence with this card, the Stargazer card as well. Amidst the heavy brush, she has been journeying for a while to either retrieve her item or has been bushwhacking her way through the landscape. The butterflies are a symbol of royal leadership, but also transformation and patience. The Queen of Swords is a call to action, and no one is going to help you more than yourself. Believe in your power and shine your light. Others will follow. Remember that goddesses are more than beauty and magic. It is often their hard work that yields them rewards. Ha harness determination and believe in yourself. Go out and get what you want. Fight and carve your own way. Yes, what did I say about carving your own way with like Artemis, she of the world, going your own way? Go your own way. Um, do not be afraid to show courage and strength. Yeah, I feel like whatever it is you're doing, you will have to kind of embrace courage and strength for this. But, you know, we've got the lion here, which is symbolic of strength. So, and the bear, which is also symbolic of strength and protection. So I feel like you have a lot of strength and you are very protected with whatever it is that, whatever this truth is that you're putting out. So yeah, do not be afraid to show courage and strength. And the key was a determination, perseverance and independence. Exactly. That's Artemis energy, independence going your own way. I also forgot to mention that Artemis as well. I, I feel her very strongly linked with Sagittarius energy. So some of you may be Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, North Node. Um, you know, it could be as well a, like um, Sagittarius rules over the ninth house, which is all about like learning, wisdom, like spiritual learning, travel, um, you know, self-development, kind of um expansion all that kind of thing so i feel like you you kind of embody that sagittarian even if you you aren't sagittarius sun you might have sagittarian energy somewhere in your chart quite strong like like yeah it could be interesting to see where that is in your in your birth chart but it doesn't have to be it's just kind of something that came through or like what planets are in your ninth house it could be interesting to see what planets are in your ninth house. But yeah, a strong queen of swords, like, like leadership, like leadership uh, along the lines of like what your truth is, what your perception is, like following your truth, following your ideas, following like what is true to you, staying strong in your integrity. Let's get a little bit more energy. How are we going for timing? Okay. Let's get some more guidance for... What can pile three do to align Whoop. the sun? Oh my gosh. Double message of the sun because we had the sun symbol here for this Rue card. 
on the lion energy, which is very Leo energy, um, which is all about shining your light, which I talked about. And we've got the sun, which is all about shining your light, you know, acting from your own personal identity, from your personal will, like having, again, having that courage, like it's solar plexus energy, which is all about having the courage to like go your own way. Hearing that again, go your own way, like carve your own path, like express yourself, shine your light, all of that. So yeah, strong message around like being your true self, like kind of, yeah, being confident and courageous enough. And we've got another, we've got a big cat here with the line and then we've got a, I don't know what that is. Is that a cheetah? like a vintage cheetah um <laughs> it looks very like you know those kind of big cats are like very stealth you know and they're like kind of not like generally speaking I don't think they're really eaten by the other animals of the animal kingdom like they're the the hunters so it's reminding me of there's a card in the sacred rebels deck called be the hunter, not the hunted, which came out in a reading really recently. So some of you might be from, you might remember that reading or that card. Because I'm kind of getting this like hunter vibe, like you turning into the hunter instead of being the one being persecuted. Like you're going to turn the tables on some situation or some people. Oh my gosh. Okay, that's way too many. Hold on. Sorry. Uh, I can't. Oh, it's the video. Hold on. Let's see I'm on a different phone and I can't pause the video on this phone annoyingly. So just have to keep going that was way too many let's try it let's get one more okay can we have one more card for pile number three how they can align with the soul essence and then we'll finish up with the daring dreamer guidance okay that's two cards but let's see interesting wow more more big cats more like what are these leopards Gosh, I don't know my animal biology at all. <sighs> anyway. Okay, so we've got two twos, which is interesting. Two of cups and two of swords. So this is an interesting two of cups. Because two of cups is usually, like it's often two lovers. It often shows like a romantic scene. But in this case, it shows like one person. Oh, sorry. There's like, there's boobies. I have to cover it up. One person with um, the scales of justice, which is interesting. And then two cats, one that's looking at the other one. And then a world globe behind. So interesting energy for a two of cups card. I kind of pick this up. I kind of get this more as like a, a justice energy, like you're sort of... Uh, a warrior for justice or you have ideas of like what justice should be you know and we had that like Artemis energy with you know being a protector against those who get persecuted so it could be something around like writing the scales of justice like you know writing wrongs like bringing I'm hearing like Ruth Bader Ginsburg another another big figure so yeah wow and the candle just flickered then um and two of swords which is you know intuitive wisdom like needing to like not look at the outside which this card perception talks about not being swayed by the outside not being swayed by anyone else not letting anyone else control your own perception on it on something and then we've got this two of swords with where she's blindfolded to what's going on on the outside and she's having she's forced to then go within and like connect them with her own wisdom her own intuition to get clarity on a situation about a direction for something so maybe some of you in order to like align with your soul essence in order to like really embrace this like this true self your sun self like as in your your core personality your core self be able to shine your your light there's some sort of a like rebalancing of the scales of justice and like needing to go within and maybe choose, maybe like decide on something, like choose a path, like choose which path you're going down. Like I'm hearing who you're siding with. Interesting. Gosh. So you could be, maybe you're in politics or something or law, a legal case. It could be a legal case or something like that. Or like you're researching something. Maybe you're, you're writing about a legal case or, or something and you're 
having to choose who yeah which side of the debate or something that you're on um or again it could be coming back to like what i was picking up with um some of you who might be researchers or something or work you know working for a certain school of learning or starting at a certain school of learning and you're you're considering going you know needing to carve out some time to go within to work out what your path is next like what direction you go in like if you follow do you follow their truth and their way of doing things or do you follow your truth and your intuition and your instinct and your perception on something it's interesting she's wearing like this gold dress like gold is linked to the sun or to the solar plexus you know, it's yellow energy. It's like bright, shining your light energy. So, and also blue as well, which is the throat chakra, which we've talked about a lot. So, yeah, there's definitely. Weighing, weighing something up. There's some, some decision that you're weighing up. There's some. Two of Cups can also speak of a part, excuse me, of a partnership doesn't have to be a romantic partnership it could just be a, a creative partnership like a partnership you know it could be that you've been you know partnered with another writer for example or you've been partnered with you know your university or you have a sponsor or you know um a colleague or something there could be some two of cups situation where there's two people or two two views or something like that and you're 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 having to navigate that. You're having to work out whose truth you're going to follow. I'm kind of intrigued by this. I'm going to get one more. Because I feel like it's leaving it on a bit of a cliffhanger. <laughs> so pile... Sorry, this is making this really long. If you're still with me, well done. Pile three. Do these... It's two... Ah, four of wands, and so I'm going to have to move all these over because we've got so many. You've got so many than the other piles. Don't tell them, pile three. Four of wands and eight of cups, walking away from something that's not emotionally fulfilling you. Interesting. And I love how in this four of wands card, like four of wands is usually to do with like celebration and creating foundations. It can be sometimes to do with like marriage. Ah, this could be, this is not really a love reading or anything, but for some of you, this could be walking away from a partnership, walking away from a marriage or a commitment um, to find your emotional fulfillment because your you're like paths are diverging or something, but that's very specific. And I think more generally, this is to do with like, it's less about a like love partnership and more to do with like a creative partnership or a work partnership or something to do with like your your research or your life's work or your purpose it's like there's been some sort of a foundation that some sort of a commitment some sort of a foundation some sort of a partnership or collaboration that you were in um that you are now considering walking away from and finding your own, going your own way, go your own, again, that comes through so strong, the go your own way, go your own way, being independent, like finding your own, your own tribe, your own audience, your own, whatever it is, um, it's interesting how this hand is like coming up from the depths, which is like that, that Pluto energy we talked about, the Pluto there, like coming up from the depths of the underworld. Um, like kind of, it's like a hand that's just reaching for, to be saved kind of thing. It's like coming up from like the underground where it's like, help me, save me, like get me out of this, this prison is what I'm hearing. Like this, this foundation so yeah it could be again like coming back to you know if you're a student or something you're you're like you know you're writing your master's thesis or something and you're like I don't want to do this anymore I want to go my own way I want to just use use my own ideas put them out in my own way I don't want to whoops I don't want to work for I don't want to be stuck and like being kept sort of suppressed or having my ideas suppressed or like sidelined or whatever so let's finish up with um the Daring Dreamer guidance. So 
Okay, card number 20. Number 20. Daring dreamer, you don't need to adjust your dreams to fit in with what others say is realistic, sensible or practical. Why seek to limit the power of the universe with negative expectations? Be uncom uncompromising with your heart wisdom. Listen to what it wants and yearns for and believe that the universe has put those desires there and will show you every step to take to fulfill them. Do not allow someone else to make you feel like you should change who you are or what your heart truly yearns for. Not even a tiny bit, not even for one single second. Yeah, definitely picked up like someone trying to change your, what you want or change your perception on something, change your idea, change, feel like you should change who you are. Yeah, definitely not. Um, okay, so spiritual guidance is our world needs daring dreamers to redefine beauty, success and worth. We need brave souls to shake up our cultural values so that we stop hurting ourselves and each other. You can decide what it really means to you to be beautiful, successful and worthy. That's how you take back control, disempowering the toxic definitions created by others. To live your life according to expectations set by others who do not know or care about you, who are not wise and are out, of, out for their own gain, is not a recipe for happiness or fulfillment. You are a daring dreamer and a loving, rebellious visionary. Yeah, sorry, I just want to come back to that. It's not a recipe for happiness or fulfillment. Eight of Cups is all about going to get your fulfillment, finding your, your emotional fulfillment elsewhere. So yeah, double message about fulfillment. You can imagine a far kinder and more truly beautiful world. You have the awareness and the power to say no to what is unkind, untrue and unwise. You get to invite into your life what actually has value to your soul. Be your divine badass self as you say, hello world. You can choose what you wish, but you will not choose for me. I will choose for myself. Thank you very much. Give a voice to your daring dreams. Tell the universe each day about your vision of a healed world. Speak it as though it were already real. Use your positive words of power to express your most beautiful dreams and never give up on those dreams yourself or the world. Your vision of what is possible is the healing medicine for our future world and the way to your bliss. And the sacred ritual is gaze at the sky and say aloud from my heart and my own free will, I invite the universe to bring to life these dreams of mine and state your dreams for a beautiful life and a loving world. Ah, oh, that is so beautiful. I love that palm three. That was a beautiful reading. You are a very intelligent, creative, inspiring soul. I feel like thank you so, so much for sticking with this reading. Comment below if it resonated. I would love to hear from you. I'd love to hear what you're up to. Even just leave me an emoji if it resonated. It really helps me so, so much more than you could possibly know. Hit the like button if you enjoyed the reading. It helps tell the algorithm what content is resonating for you guys. And it helps send the video out into the YouTube stratosphere to other people. And hit the subscribe button. If you're not already part of my community, I would love to have you here. Consider checking out my link to my Moon Temple membership. I'll leave that below. Uh, we are going to be working with the goddess Saraswati for uh, actualizing your potential and birthing yourself and birthing any kind of creative idea, which could be really potent for you in particular, pile number three. If you are creators, you have a creative vision, a creative idea that you want to birth into the world, it will be magical. So check the link out for that below. And all the best with aligning with your soul essence. And I will see you in the next reading. Thank you so, so much for being here. All my love to you. Bye.